In order to fulfill their promise to Ziaka, Ezra, Wake, and Deloy parted ways with Onslow and Pliskin to travel with Red, Ziaka, and Skrung to the desecrated temple. Upon their arrival, they were greeted by a man donning a mascot costume and were beckoned into the fine day boardwalk to take part in and enjoy its games and revelry. Eloy purchased himself some bagpipes to better expand his repertoire, and Ezra enjoyed the many animals on display. They were soon greeted by the man in charge, Mr. Faraday, who gave our heroes a quick verbal tour of the park before offering them a chance to face off against their champion in the arena. Believing the champion could possibly provide more information on the abyssal threat, Wake accepted the challenge. As he stepped into the pit, he was greeted by a rather sizable tafling girl, the demon of the arena, Nedra. With a kind hello followed by a mighty roar, Nedra charged at Wake and the intense battle began. Were it down to pure strength and ferocity, Nedra surely would have prevailed. However, through discipline, agility, and a little luck, Wake managed to take the champion off her feet. After the crowd in the arena dispersed and their wounds were tended to, Wake met up with the others for an audience with Mr. Faraday and Nedra in the champion's quarters. Inside, they learned of a monster prowling the sealed-off underbelly of the temple, a monster created by their culprit, the mysterious Victor. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the table. Hi. Uh, hope you've all had a good, almost full week. I know we've had a good one. I, I heard we were hunting monsters in the Dark Abyss today, so I brought my Eldritch Horror hunting cap. Oh, jeez. Mm. Uh, had to be ready for just about anything after the hard-felt battles that were <laughs> last week. Yeah, I tried to talk that one lady into giving me a giant crab. It was a real rough fight, that <laughs> verbal, that you know, verbal you, back and forth we had. You needed that back and forth. I mean, it's, it's rough. I mean, everybody had to battle with their <laughs> sense of hearing because Eloy learned a new instrument. Ah, yes. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but since last week, I have learned the bagpipes. Oh, what? Oh, man. Can you give, give us a little, give us right. a little taste? Ah, it's so real and loud. I oh, can't okay. believe you're there actually playing go. it. Yep. Roll roll for deafness. <laughs> That's a 10. We're about halfway there. What? <laughs> what? And uh, also, something that was kind of cool, I got my copy of Xanathar's Guide to Everything in the mail today, Ooh. which is D&D's yeah, the, the new newest expansion, book. right? Yep. Adds a whole bunch of new sub races, new spell uh, sub races. Listen to me, subclasses, new spells, a whole bunch of fun little extra ways to play, and also some nice little things for GMs to uh, make things a little bit more simple. That's nice. What I mean, I, also, I hear like there are. Uh, I, I read through it a little. Drunken master is now a thing. <laughs> yes. And if you think this is shilling, imagine what it would be like if Wizards of the Coast paid us. That oh, was the coast. Imagine what we could do. Yeah. Together. Buy! <laughs> no, don't buy yet. Hey, no, wait, buy yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Consider. So it's, consider. <laughs> consider for now. <laughs> if you so choose. <laughs> All right, so... Um, we learned that, uh, so I'm guessing it's going to take some time for them to dredge the oil out of the pit there. Yeah, we're just going to go for, say for uh, brevity's sake that the oil has now been dredged out. Right, so we can say that I've taken a long rest and got my key back. Yeah, everyone's gotten Yay. a rest. Hooray! I, had I, do to... I don't have to start with zero key. <laughs> I saved. Nah, you're the champ. You get in there. You can take it. I got this. Don't worry. I, I was super good last time. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Oh, you're back. You're ready for a fight again? Uh. <laughs> 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 no. I just love that now every time you turn the corner, say hi to Nedra, she waves her hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not afraid of her is the thing. I, I know I could kind you, you of won that fight. The, yeah, I won. I won. I had, like, one of her punches left in me. <laughs> and she had zero of my punches left in her, which means I won. <laughs> That's, that's if how anything, it works. you should both be nervous when you enter a room. <laughs> yeah, we're both timid now. <laughs> Alrighty. So, Eloy, before we go, I'd like you to roll me a perception check. 
Ooh, Ooh, is this for is this to see if I get my cotton candy? No, you got your cotton candy. We got that okay, in the uh, <laughs> we got that in the discussion. Uh, twenty five. Twenty five. Ooh, okay. One quick second, because this might be something cool you Ooh. just unlocked. Uh-huh. Oh, fuck, oh, yeah, not. it is. <laughs> so you went down to get yourself a second round of cotton candy while you're waiting for everyone to dredge this oil out. You overhear something. There are two goblins off to the side saying that they find the new guy that just walked into the temple a couple of hours ago. He's really familiar. Like, strikingly familiar, but they just cannot place it on them. Hmm. Oh, dear. S- excuse me? Did, did I? Eh? What the? Oh, ah! Did, did I overhear you say something about a about a new feller showing up? Oh wait, wait a minute! Oh, you're with him. You, are, are, wait, aren't is he the guy with him? I don't know. I don't think he's the guy with him. Are you the guy with him? I am. I am with several people. Are you with the new guy in the pinstripe clothes and the suspenders? That is what Scrung is wearing. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the guy in Scrung's outfit? I, <laughs> I, I did not realize I could like Scrung anymore, but now. I... <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's Scrung. He's my friend. Is he now? Tell us. Uh, you know anything a little bit more about him that you're willing to share? I mean, we we they, he holds up a huge sack. We got coin in it for you. Uh, sure. I mean, he's real grouchy. He does not like piggyback rides. Um, I don't know. What do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> we kind of want to know, like, where he came from. Like, why is he on the island? Stuff like that. Because, you know, it's kind of weird, but... And I know this is going to sound really, really strange, but, uh... And you don't seem like the kind of fellow who would know this sort of thing. But, uh, you know anything about goblin hierarchy? Roll me knowledge. Uh, yeah, let's let's find out if I know anything. I rolled a th- uh, four. You know that goblins are short and usually green. They are not. They, the, is there such a thing as a lower archy? Because because you're. Is this offensive to say very small people? There's a kingdom of goblins, my friend. There's a goblin king. Is he nice? <laughs> they both look to each other and start laughing. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, that's cute. That's but but seriously, <laughs> he's uh, he's something. We'll we'll give you that. But you know, if it weren't for the fact that he's got like at least thirty kids, I would say that. That fella you were walking around with, he kind of looks like him, really slightly. Really? Oh, man. I can't wait to tell everybody the Skrung's Goblin Royalty. <laughs> you mind if we, uh, come with you to see about that? You know where he is now? I, I have honestly no idea. He tends to do this thing where you're, you're talking to him, and then you turn one way, and then you turn back, and he's just gone. Oh, you mean like this? He holds up a signet ring, taps it with his finger, and a small portal st- opens right next to him. <laughs> I mean, maybe, but if he's been doing that, he's been real careful to do that when I'm not looking. Because hmm. I, I never see a hole in the air like that in my whole life. I see. Now, uh, where did you say you last saw him again? And what was the name he went by? Scrung? Scrung, huh? Yeah, now, now let's see. The last time I saw him, did you see the big fight? That was, that was another one of my friends, the fish man who, who punched out the, the nine-foot-tall girl. Well, hmm. the last time I saw Scrung, he he did a naughty, and he bet against his friend, and he lost a whole powerful lot of money, and I bet, I bet on my friend. So I won the money, and I, I gave him some money, and I counted him out to, to help offset his losses, and boy, I just, I just lost track of him after that. You watch as one of the guys has actually gone through the portal now, and it closes. <laughs> Is that... Is that like wizardy magic, or is that, or did a god do that? I'm, I'm still trying to sort through what makes magic happen. Don't worry, friend. It was just a door. Okay. Us, <laughs> us goblins make doors like that all the time. Works for me. I, I know nothing to contradict that, so I'm going to believe you. All right. Well, uh, thanks for the information, friend. Here you go. He hands you the bag, and well, he walks off. Thank you so much. You're welcome. He turns the corner. Everyone is so nice to me, just handing me bags of shiny gold all the time, every day. <laughs> we are just tripping over money. <laughs> we are just fucking over strong left and right. <laughs> I am going to take a look in this bag, and I, I'm assuming it's gold, but... <laughs> it's silver pieces. Silver pieces, okay. You got 100 silver pieces, which means one gold. Okay. <laughs> 
I know what that's worth, but Eloy does not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, look at all this silver. <laughs> it's this gray gold they gave me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you head back? Yeah. All right, you, you reach everyone else. You, you come back with a big thing of cotton candy. Nedra is, like, looming over you right now, kind of, like, going no. like this. <laughs> would, would you like some cotton candy, Nedra? Yes, I would. I reach back into my saddlebags. I got a whole other bag for you. <laughs> oh! I thought you might want some. You, you surely did love that one before. Hulking hand <laughs> on the head. <laughs> Skin pulling back. Skin pulling back. You see his eyes bulge forward. <laughs> I will accept this in in the spirit in which it is meant, but that does hurt quite a bit. <laughs> Your affection stings. <laughs> Spe- speaking of affections that sting and, and and friendship that's real mean, anybody seen Scrung? I'm right here. Oh oh, hi there. I'm sorry, I did not see you. You know, two two goblin boys was was out there looking for you. Are they friends of yours? No, I don't have any friends around here. Yeah, you do. Hey. <laughs> I don't have any friends around here. Ah. Well, well, boy, Scrung, I seem to recall when you lost a big old bet. Just just offsetting your losses right there. <laughs> now, why would I do that for somebody who's not my friend? Why would you accept <laughs> gifts from somebody who was not a friend, Scrung? Why do you ask if I know anyone around here, Eloy? Be- because two goblins was, was walking around in and out of holes in the air and looking for you. They said you look like the Goblin King. Hold on, did, what? <laughs> what? What the fuck are you on? What? What is happening, Eloy? What? Come on now, really? I, I want to roll knowledge. I'm guessing. <laughs> you want about the goblin? If you know if I know anything about the kingdom, Goblin King, go like, for it. Uh, uh, nineteen. Nineteen. You know that there is such a thing as the Goblin uh, Kingdom. Okay. You don't know where it's from, but. They are known to be like a subset of like Fey, uh, Fey heritage, but they have their own like little pocket dimension that also acts as a gateway between here, the arcane realm, and the mortal realm. Okay, I'm guessing I don't know enough about the Goblin King to be like, wait, he does look like you know, yeah, like right off the top of your head, you can't you say you know met him. Okay. You, you haven't enough. met him, and like you only heard him through words, not by actually visibly okay. seeing him. You do know that, like, the Goblin King has a crap load of kids, like, up to the 30s in kids. Okay. Most of them female. A lot of them, some of them have princes, but most of his hierarchy are just female. Okay. I will not mention this, but I am aware of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. That's just what they were saying. I don't, I, you're the first Goblin I ever did meet, so that's all I got to go on. You know, I never did ask Grung. What did bring you to this island? A ship full of orcs. You were there. <laughs> yeah, I, re- I recall, but what brought you with them? I was hitching a ride, and they asked if I wanted to do a job. Fair enough. I'm going to roll insight, or uh, wi- I'll just do whatever wisdom roll it That's is. That's an insight check. Insight, so wisdom. Yep. Ah, uh, there's my offset. I'm guessing a five won't do it. <laughs> no, and he actually had a seven. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so for all you know, he's re- he's telling you the truth. And he's Fair enough. Yeah. Fair. Hey, let me ask you a question, Skrunk. Those those goblins, they was opening up, they called them doors, but they was in the air, which most doors is in walls. Can you do that too? They said all goblins could do that. <laughs> no. He's no. like he's like he's like doing all kinds of like counter signs, like <laughs> scratching his nose. Sim sim salabim. No, nothing's <laughs> happening. <laughs> I, now I would like to see if I... Now I ex- suspect him of... That oh. would be a nat one. <laughs> you know, it's super you, you thought he... For a second there, you thought he just pulled a, a rabbit out of a non-existent hat. <laughs> you really thought it was going to happen. You're really disappointed about that. Now even Nedra was just like, oh, no rabbit. I feel like if Skrung had this kind of power, he would have used that door to get out of a lot of situations we thrust him into. Probably. So I think I'll trust that he's just a really shitty goblin, apparently. (laughs) You didn't say that out loud, did you? Oh, I did. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Thanks, Ezra. You're welcome. I'm sure you're a really shitty half-elf, too. Well, you know, if you had any friends around, they might have been able to tell you different. (laughs) Ezra's feelings are hurt. Not actually. So are mine. 
<laughs> so are Skrungs. Well, meanwhile, Red is gonna look at Skrung for a second. <laughs> no, she unfortunately cannot read him as well. <laughs> she looks Fuck. in the other direction. He is a closed book. Yep. Nedra, hey Nedra, watch this. <laughs> Will o wisps swarm up and form a top hat, and a rabbit pops out. She screams and ducks behind the couch. Oh, oh. No, it's okay, it's okay, it's just will o wisps. You, no, you, she is actually feared right now because of this. Oh, Nedra, oh, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, are you? She, like, was about to pick up a vase and throw it at you. No, 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 this is fine, this is fine. No, it's, it's, I can, I can explain what that was. That was will o wisps. Didn't that she live set in herself air. on fire when she fought you? I don't think she's afraid of the fire. Roll, uh, roll diplomacy. Uh, These rolls are fucking terrible today, Jesus. Uh, 18. She, like, puts it down, like, composes herself, like, tries to, like, just sway it off. <laughs> Happy all over again. I, I'm sorry I spooked you there, uh, there, Nedra. I get... Let me tell you something. I get real spooked by by things that don't look natural neither. I will not do that again. You're scared of ghosts too? I, I've never met one, but I'm sure I would be petrified. I see them all the time. Where do you see them, Nedra? When I close my eyes sometimes. I usually see one as big as me looking over me and telling me all sorts of things. What do they tell you? They tell me that why don't I kill when I punch? Well, I, for one, am thankful that you don't. I am, too. Or else I wouldn't have cotton candy with this friend. Exactly. Yeah. Can, look, it's real fun to punch people, but if you kill them, you can only punch them once. Ezra, that might be the... Not Ez, Eloy, that might be the smartest thing you've ever said. <laughs> <laughs> So, by this point, uh, they have dredged out all the oil. Third day comes back to you. Now, just be warned. There will We can't get rid of all the oil that's around there. This place was kind of built with traps in mind. I'm sure this one can attest to that. Ziaka, he looks to Ziaka. And uh, don't worry if you see a couple of my boys down there. They're, uh, they're small enough that they can actually fit through the chutes like this one can. Right. And you said there was a creature roaming around down there. There's a creature roaming around down there. But uh, that's the thing, is that he's uh, kind of not paying us any mind. But I don't like... I just do not do not like it. That's why I want this thing to go down there and check it out. See if there's a way we can just put it back to sleep or something. Ziaka just, like, shakes her head. I got a lullaby song. It works real good. I've seen it red, in action. It red, red, red kind of like looks over to you. I don't think magical sleep will put the undead at rest. Okay, first of all, and then sec, are we? Are, are there undeads down there? Nobody told me nothing about spooks. Oh, what? Nedra jumps behind the couch again. <laughs> I thought it was just a skeleton. Skeletons are things you can see. I see them all the time. Well, you can see the undead typically, so. You see him too? I mean, I don't struggle with seeing them, but I I know that they are seeable. <laughs> I rolled a nat one on knowledge. Undead don't exist. You can't bring things back to life. <laughs> <laughs> when you're dead, that's it. Red would just look to you and just be like... <sighs> look, life ends. It just happens, okay? You, usually because of rocks. Sometimes because of rocks. Sometimes. Red, Red just like puts her fingers to her face. With All the, the stuff we've seen, I wouldn't have pegged you boy. as a nihilist, Wake. <laughs> and you're not familiar with the fact that me told us that the head wizard in this town is a necromancer? <laughs> we've been chasing a necromancer. <laughs> Look, necromatic magic is neat and all, but there's no way that you're reanimating a whole being is all I'm saying. Ziaka's just snick snickers at that. Snickers. <laughs> oh, you're gonna you're gonna have a lot of fun going down here. I can already tell. Look, I, okay, everything I've seen that could be considered undead has just been brought back to life by these things. I hold up this. <laughs> this thing is obviously some sort of 
parasite or something that latches on to the being and just manipulates whatever corpse it's a part of. Red's actually kind of impressed with this. She looks at you with actually a very proud smile. I never took you for a scientific man. Well, sometime, Well, when you're out there gutting fish, you have to learn a few things about parasites. Hmm. Man of experience, I'm sure. That kind of opened up this weird little expression of, like, the broken coldness of Red by you just saying that. She is now looking at you with, like, a little bit more of a respectful light. I... <laughs> what? Did, did you think I was dumb? No, of course not. Okay. But, unfortunately, we are in a situation that kind of revolves around, snaps her fingers, magical means. However, I am one who... While, yes, this is in my blood, she kind of, like, snatches the fire away from her hand, I'd rather use my time and energies in being logical. I'm just saying there's a difference between, you know, manipulating the elements, throwing magic at your whim, and bringing back a corpse. That's just all well and good, kids, but get that thing out of here! Fine! <laughs> Third day is just, like... Just sitting there, just like, are you guys going to do something or what? Go down there and take care of this. <laughs> Sorry, Thuraday. We tend to talk about things before just doing them. <laughs> Character development, what's that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, so you guys uh, head down. Yeah. All I, right. I, I gear myself up appropriately. All righty. Let's see. You descend down a very large spiral staircase. The chamber... Uh, you're pretty much in the center of the Coliseum now, and you've been walking down this spiral staircase for what seems to be a good ten minutes. You're going down deep. Uh, as the light uh, disappears from above you, you watch as Torchlight leads the way. Apparently, they also prep this for your coming. All right, I asked Zyaka, exactly how far down does this go? We're going to the base of the mountain. Remember where we first entered into the tunnel? Yeah. Well, we were only at the bottom, and then we raised... And then, uh, if, you were if you recall, we actually walked up uh, a slope. That was us leading into the temple. This feels like a lot further. I wouldn't put it past it to be uh, built this way. However, the chutes that are created for us to travel through are meant for fast travel of the Yanti. So, unfortunately, it might, it might just be slower considering we're going down these things which were built for the purebloods and not the Molsons like me. Makes sense. Alrighty, so you guys keep going down on your way and you start noticing that the walls are starting to glitter more. As, you, as the light touches against the wall, the walls are sparkling. Huh. More and more and more. Could I, is there anything I could look at like either with perception or investigation investigation to try and figure out what it is all right i'll do the same wow this is the antithesis of last week that's another nat one i don't know shit i got an 18 this is gold the walls are gold the stairs are gold this whole chamber is gold going down you said the collected one really likes gold right and precious metals yes all right that it makes sense that the the place I would live in would have golden walls and stairs. And I look back at Scrung. <laughs> He's trying to lift up one of the steps. M maybe on the way out. <laughs> mm. Alrighty, so you guys keep going down until finally you reach the bottom. There are now two uh, tunnels that lead out to the left and to the right, and they lead out into pretty much the same place, but it's like the bottom of the Colosseum now. So it's like the entire like area that was the Coliseum, that's as big as the open area is now. You just came down and you're on the far south end and going out, you could like even going left or right will just make you look towards one direction into this huge room. Right. Uh in this room, let me just quickly get back here. Uh you actually as soon as you walk out through the side, you see there there are Four goblins on each side just staring you down, waiting for you to come this way. Uh, they actually usher you to go deeper inside, and you notice that there is a... From what you can see with what light is available, you can see the silhouette of a giant lizard-like creature in the middle of the room. It's not moving. 
and no one seem and everyone seems to be at ease with this thing hulking and looking like it's holding the entire ceiling up. No, well, that's. I asked Ziaka what the uh, what the deal with the <laughs> I'm assuming statue is. That is our depiction of the collective one. Huh. I, 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 I try to hold my torch up to it to see if I can see it better. The moment you hold your torch up, you watch the entire room glitter. This place is encrusted with gemstones, precious metals. Anything that shines, this entire room is made of it. It's a rainbow of precious metals. Touch nothing but the lamp. <laughs> <laughs> you look forward. Uh, you can see a little bit of the uh, collective one. However, you also see that there are pedestals that are risen up in a sort of like display-like manner, and there are pieces of artwork, there are pieces of armor that seem like they would only be able to fit a Yan T, uh, pedestaled and on display. It's kind of amazing how no one here has ever tried to actually steal anything, especially the goblins. However, you do also see along the walls that there are large rows of very giant sarcophagi. I look back at Ziaka, seeing all this shiny stuff, because I know she has a <laughs> penchant for them. Yeah, she's kind of, like, jittering in place, like, mm -hmm. no. B biting her snake lip. Yep. Mm -hmm. You said we were ushered in by some goblins? Yeah, they're right there. They're standing off on the side, like, showing you guys, like, this is what we have so far. I, I kind of make my way over to one of them and just kind of motion towards all the, the shiny, precious, metal -y stuff, and I go, so, when have you guys ever been tempted to take some of this? Oh, we have, but, uh... Then uh, one of those would open up, and then we'd have to sit here and listen to all their tripe and not ever leave. So no one, so so if someone lect someone lectures you if you take this. Yeah. Uh, however, the last couple of weeks when we first got here, one of them was really really wordy. We couldn't understand a thing he was saying because he speaks in that snake tongue. But he was very 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 adamant in making sure that we stay here and listen to his lecture about. Something that was going on with the statue. Ziaka like immediately looks to the statue at that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and she slithers on up to it. I'm going to join her and investigate the statue. Nope. Would that's a two. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I wanted to whisper something, Damn. would that be stealth? Uh, Wake what are you is dumb what, today? What are you trying? Well, say what you have to say, and I'll let you know. I'm going to talk to one of the goblins and be like, by the way, does that goblin over there, does he look like your king or anything? <laughs> Our king? <laughs> uh, roll stealth. Uh, modified 22. Yep, they're in on that. Let me roll for Skrung. And that one, he's not hearing shit. <laughs> they look over at him. They kind of peer and, like, scratch their, scratch their chins. Just following up on a rumor. Just, you know, don't... Don't make any sudden moves or anything if it turns out to be a thing. I'm kind of working a case here, but just trying to figure this out. Huh. Hey, Roy, does this guy look like someone you know? It's dumb, but I think he kind of looks like the king. All right, thanks, fellas. You've been a great help. Don't tell anyone I'd talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> and here's... A gold for each of you. <laughs> Do you see where they were? Two gold for each of you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, guys, I am. I need this money to follow up on this job I'm doing. I can't. Fine, here's 50 gold. Split it however you guys want. Diplomacy. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of 17s today, which means, uh, 21. All right, so 50 times 8. <sighs> That's a lot of gold, fellas. You, sh you sure you... <sighs> Fine. I make a big deal about how it's so much money. <laughs> I give them 400 gold. Not 20. <laughs> Scrung grabs you by the back of the shirt <laughs> and ah. pulls you back. Hey, Scrung, how's it going? What are you doing? No, oh, just paying up on a bet with some uh some some entrepreneurs down here. <laughs> with my high eleven in deception. <laughs> Wow. 
Why are you so adamant? Wh- I keep saying the word adamant. I apologize. <laughs> Why are you so in on making sure that everyone thinks that I'm the king? I'm not trying to make sure they think you're the king. I want to find out if you are. Look, I get it. You're going to tell me you're not. Maybe you don't even know you are. I just want to figure this out. Because hey, Of guess course what? I would know if I was the king. Amnesia's a thing, Skrung. It's happened not before. Not when you're rich and powerful like the king of the goblins. Unless there's someone who wanted you out of the picture like a king of some sort. So, you know, just Why try to figure this matter? out. Why would that matter? There's at least 30 of them there. Because was- there might be a big prize in it for me if I bring the king's long lost son home. Yeah, okay. Let's see you go to the fucking Goblin Kingdom. All right, sure. Whatever you say, Ezra. Either way, if it's not going to bother you, then don't worry about it. Good. Good. <laughs> just continue to antagonize Scrug. I'm not yeah. antagonizing him. I just want to find out who he is. <laughs> this is my curiosity, not my tricksterness coming out. <laughs> Roll insight. Uh, 14. Or, sorry, 15. Even if you want to pass blame or judgment on Skrung, you still can't read him. You're going to need a lot more evidence. <laughs> All right. All righty. So you head on over to the statue? Yeah, and boy, is it purdy. <laughs> yeah, it's purdy. It's actually the entire room. It's – let me look at this here again real quick. The room is the statue. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Buh, 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 buh. The center of the room is a large statue made of pure emerald, depicting a lizard-like creature erupting ah, so from a globe, shiny. filled to burst, uh, filled with what appears to be lava that is holding the ceiling up. The globe has lava inside of it. Oh, is that, so I'm guessing that's glowing. Yes. Well, that's pretty. Ziaka looks inside the globe. She's not happy with this. What's wrong? I yell up to her. She's, she didn't go up to the... She's, oh. like, right next to it. Like, you guys are... We're just all kind of looking up at you're it. You're kind of, okay. like, huddled around the statue looking up at it, and she's looking at the globe, which is, like, a little bit higher than you. Okay, I ask what's wrong. The heart's missing. The heart of lava? Well, yes, in a way, but the collective one's heart is the ultimate tribute that's usually inside there, guarded by the lava. There's no earthly way that a creature can just reach inside and grab it. They would either have to break it or enter by ethereal means. And even then, the lava would sear ethereal. Hmm. Now, just just throwing this out there, not accusing anybody, I have recently learned that goblins can open doors in air. <laughs> that, that might solve half of that riddle. Scrung's just like... But then Red kind of like holds her hand to not, Skrung. Not you, Skrung. Obviously not you, but other goblins. That would be a nice assumption, Eloy. Red looks to you. But as Ziaka has said, reaching into there would surely burn the victim or the person trying to steal whatever was inside. Did Nedra come with us? Nedra's here, right? Oh, Nedra's there too. I asked Nedra. Her face is like straight on top of the glass like, eh. <laughs> I asked Nedra, so this is where you found that strange man, right? Not in here. I actually saw him just as he was about to go into the door. I saw someone coming down this way as they were trying to uh, change out the oil. And then all of a sudden, a man, w- uh, a man was coming down this way. And I grabbed him and told him he wasn't supposed to be down here. And then he did this to my arm. The man did that to your arm? Yes. Hmm. He didn't make you do anything else like reach into that ball up there or anything, right? No, I've never actually been in this room before. Hmm. It's so cool. Look at that giant lizard thing. It's and look really at that cool. lizard thing right over there. Yeah, there's, there's an undead snake stuff. man looking at you. There's a lot of lizards down <laughs> here. <laughs> oh! Hi. Tiaka, you know this guy? Tiaka looks at you just like... <laughs> I'm sorry, I make light of scary situations. It's what I do. It's not attacking us. It's actually one of the guardians here. So long as one of us are around, it won't strike. Oh, well, then good thing. <laughs> then so uh, it's not that you know him, but by association, we are not being attacked. So thanks. I'm going to walk up. That's the this... word. Uh, like one of the goblins like pulls out a cigarette. Yeah, that's the wordy one, all right. <laughs> so this one got awakened. Yes. I walk up to it. Impossible. I investigate. <laughs> 
That's another. That's that's a modified. That's intelligence six. You walk on up to it. You try to open your mouth to try and say something, it's and you f- you feel the waft of dead flesh hit your face. <laughs> oh God, he needs a bath. He really needs a bath. <laughs> Funny, we never make room for baths and tombs. Do I punch it? Ziaka like looks to Nedra like, no, no, no. (laughs) I don't think this one needs to get punched. Ziaka then moves on up to the to the ghoul like uh, figure. This thing is a pure blood, by the way. It's not a Molson like she is. It's actually like it has limbs. It's a humanoid person. Like it it looks. It literally looks like a humanoid person, but like a little bit of snake features are like on its skin that's still rotting. It has scales coming down like the side of its cheek. It's got a. It actually, its hair, the very tail ends of his hair that are still left on his head, are braided that like go from like hair. Into the tips of snails of a okay, snake so, snail. Okay, uh, so unlike Siaka, who has is like she has arms, but the rest of her is all snake. This thing actually has limbs. Yes. Okay. This is a this is, looks like a basic human being skeleton. Okay. But it's huge. Like it's a fucking huge dude. And Ziaka uh, moves up to it and starts hissing and growling at it, and it gives actually a hiss and growl back to her, and they're now placed into conversation. Anybody, anybody picking up any of this? Well, it's not dwarven. I can tell you that. I, I'm Does a, anyone here speak draconic? Nope. 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 <laughs> nope. Can't say I've had a need for that. I, I would say that there is roughly a 50% chance that that is a language. All right. <laughs> I, I can take that bet. <laughs> All righty. So let me just quickly look at this because Red's now going to translate for you guys. All right. Since she, she sure speak- is knowledgeable. She would be. I hope so. She's a freaking sorcerer. Gotcha. (laughs) Let's see. Hmm? (laughs) She's a sorcerer? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, no. Let's see. I apologize. I'm just making sure these notes are correct. Ah, here we go. The undead... uh, This is Red now saying. The undead is explaining to her that someone came into this chamber and tried to disturb the tombs in the sarcophagi more than actually touch anything that was on the pedestals. I nudge Eloy and go, undead. <laughs> <laughs> Just point at the person Siaka's <laughs> talking to. Uh, they're still kind of like hissing and growling at each other, and Red's like kind of like squinting, trying to like get every last word because it's a variant of uh, Draconic. It has a dialect to it. Yeah, it has a weird dialect to it. <laughs> Lots so. of these and thous. <laughs> Everything's like kind of past tense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she only minored. In she Draconic. starts miming. The undead recalls a bald elf in blue garment. That came from the sea with a vast knowledge of the rot that rises from the ocean. So it knows about the abyssal then. And the, I'd wager that this bald elf is our victor. It would seem that way. And blue garment, uh, Ziaka, uh, uh, Red kind of looks at Ziaka and like tries to interrupt her to like try to press for more information about that. The man in blue has a lot of silver trimmings, something that is not a piece of this entire tribute room. It's a different kind of metal, something that does not belong on this island. Mithril. Roll, yep. <laughs> I, well, I recall from the- Roll, uh, yes. Roll, yes. Uh, is seven a yes? <laughs> you can gauge that it's Mithril. Okay. So- I, I just, ro- I recall from the uh, armory. And yep. the fact that this guy is military yep. and elven. Uh, based on the trimmings, uh, based on more description from the guy, uh, the trimmings were more like of around the cloth, and that's actually a part of naval uh, hierarchy. So this man was way up the totem pole he was in an rank. Officer. He was an officer. He wasn't just a regular scrub. Maybe not the captain, but he was definitely lieutenant, maybe. Unfortunately, the undead does not know. The under the undead does not have any way to gauge that. Undead How- has no way to gauge that, and you know what? Just for the hell of it, I'm going to roll my knowledge of military. Does an eight get me anything? What the fuck? Roll dice? with advantage. Oh, yay! Advantage. 
know a little bit more about the military than you? Does an 11 get me something? You can think lieutenant. All right. It's 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 above grunt, below captain. Yeah. Sergeant, lieutenant, maybe. All righty. Uh, Red continues uh, to allow Ziaka to talk to this creature. I think it's saying something about attempting true resurrection without the soul's willingness and no proper piece of the body. Well, that doesn't sound good for any party. Not really. I hold out the uh, jar of tumor that I have. <laughs> I ask uh, Ziaka if this thing recognizes any of this. She, hold, she takes the jar and holds it to the creature. The creature... You guess observes the jar with no eyes. <laughs> it's eye sockets. I assume it, its eyes are just in there. It lurches. It, it lurches back and kind of like does like that dog head tilt thing. Like what? So that's a no. All right. So we know that uh, this doesn't have anything to do with what's going on down here. Uh, they return back to the conversation. The creature then says that the collective heart has been taken out of the statue. The collective one is ill and will cause and this will cause consequences to the island. Did you Co consequences like everybody gets cotton candy or like <laughs> the end of the world? Mm. Well, something tells me that if uh she's correct, the island will sink is into the water. Strong like looks at you. Isn't that what your guy Victor wants to do? Seems like it. I mean, Personally, you uh, non-gills will probably have it more issue with that than I will, but I would rather that not happen. Yeah, and then they also talk about all the rot that's coming out of the ocean. Yeah, which means I will inevitably have issue with it. So you're in this just as we are. Netra, how long ago did you run into the man who came out of here? This was a week ago. All right. I asked Zihaka, you know, I'm, I'm not much for... Uh, I don't know how much of the prophecy predicts that, or whatever doctrine you have states this kind of stuff. Is there a time limit the collective one usually gives for this sort of thing? <laughs> I don't believe so. The collective one is that of close to a demigod. I'm more than certain that this abyssal or this rot that you're talking of hasn't touched the collective one yet. Well, that's good. I can hope. But uh, this does leave me a little troubled. Obvi for the obvious reasons, but I want to speak to my tribe again, but I can't leave the island with this lockdown in effect. How far out is your tribe? It's the southern islands. It would probably be an hour or two's boat ride away from here. I think we can probably get something worked out if this is as important as it seems to be. This is all uh, red kind of looks to you. Well, and, and, yeah, excuse me. This is all... Stuff we should be telling Mead, too. Maybe the necromancer has something to do that can help us out with this. That makes sense. And we also don't know if what this tadpole thing is that this Victor's looking for. Hmm. All we know is, is that he came down here to try and get a body, but that didn't succeed, did it? She looks to the creature. She's, he says, no, I figured. <laughs> None of the bodies were uplifted. None of them were taken. No items were taken here except for the heart. And from what the creature is telling you, the heart was taken well before, well before this whole body snatching thing became an issue. Okay, so well before Victor showed up? Even? Well before Victor showed up. Oh, that's awkward. The heart's been taken. The I, asked, I, I look to the goblins. We ran into another crew of pirates here. They seemed very interested with things that were going on down here. Even offered me insight as to how to beat Nedra. Don't worry, I did not take any of that. <laughs> I wanted a fair fight. I look at her. <laughs> Do you know anything about these folks? Uh, I can't say I know anyone who tried to mutiny against the captain. And this ain't Mead we're talking about either. No, this is not Mead we're talking about. I mean, Nyth has a very, very, very unpleasant way of taking care of traitors. And a lot of folks see it before they even join the crew. 
He makes it a point to show off his power. And with... Public what, execution kind of guy? You know, you wouldn't think for someone who's really all, like, happy-go-lucky and builds theme parks all over the world for all, for all manner of fun and haberdashery. <laughs> Guy's taking a swig. Look, man, it's really cold down here. Hey, I get you. <laughs> hmm. So, traitors in Knights uh, Pirates is a little unheard of because the captain has a way of taking care of that. Well, that... Oh, a way that makes sh that makes everyone not want to mutiny. Well, that doesn't sound very nice at all. Hey! There we go. You brought your drum kit down, too. <laughs> Where did you buy that? <laughs> he, he, he has cymbals and a bongo. I was going to say, <laughs> gonna say you go. your bongos are... <laughs> oh, no, you, you touched the golden bongos <laughs> of Gublata. <laughs> Another serpent ghoul rises. <laughs> <laughs> Who just, touched the bongos of Gublata? <laughs> I, I asked Ziaka if this thing knows anything about the person that actually, like, really took the heart. Like, it obviously came out when it happened, right? She asks it. It came out after. Mm. So whoever took the heart actually was a lot uh, was a lot slipperier to get past fucking ghouls and, like, all the traps down here. Do we have any sort of, like, I know it's before uh, our bald elf man was down here, uh, when the heart was taken? Like how long? So about a week, a week, and he was oh, here. Victor, with... Victor was here a week yeah, ago. Yeah, Victor was here oh, a Victor week. Victor was ago. here a week ago, and this was taken before that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like how long ago? Like is this like, like unfortunately like a while ago? Unfortunately, the ghoul cannot process time. That's being fair. Underground and in a crypt, and only awoken when something was wrong. Yeah. So. But he like... but he awoke when it came or when the heart was. He dead, he actually right? awoke and f he awoke sensing that there was trouble. And it was gone. So even the concept of time of how long it was taken is a mystery to him. Okay, so he woke up. It was already gone by the time he was awake. Came out here. And then no when, one was down and here. And then when folks came down here to uh, set up the temple, he was down here like saying, return it, return it. And no one could understand him, but he wasn't attacking. So is it safe to assume that this whole carnival thing happened after this heart was taken? Hard to say. Hard to yeah. say. Because this hole was filled up after they noticed the undead snake man, right? Yes. That's what I gathered last time. So essentially, and they, and they always was... change out the oil. they always change out the oil uh, from the Colosseum. So by timeline, we can assume that basically that hole was uncovered while the arena was still here. Maybe the arena wasn't even set up yet. Somebody came down here, removed the heart somehow, snuck back out. And then eventually somebody went down there to look for a prize pool, found the undead snake man. <laughs> and yes, we get it. You don't believe this man before us exists. No, I believe he exists. I just don't think he's undead. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> look, some sort of curse, off. something, I don't know. <laughs> Unaging, mummifying, whatever. Not undead. Different. <laughs> he's just as bad as you with magic. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm just as scared as magic as I am of undeads. <laughs> Red just holds her face. Undeads. No, not you. You're, you're very nice, Miss Red. I did not mean to offend. I'm, I'm trying to be okay with this, okay? <laughs> she like she gives you a little, a little peppermint here. Just have this. Oh, thank you. Where's mine? Nedra screams at her. <laughs> but yeah, so the timeline is: somebody came down here, took this thing, woke him up. And then he was discovered, that was filled in. X amount of time later, we show up. Yep. Well, we might want to see if Thuraday knows anything about this. I mean... Clearly, before it was filled up, he would know something. That's my only thought, is he might have a lead, might have seen someone with a big old heart <laughs> walk, <laughs> walking out. Uh, roll me a acrobatics. Uh-oh. Ezra. Us. Oh, just Ezra? Uh, modified 24. Wow. Hmm. Okay. Still not good enough. No, 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 no. You did just fine. Like, you feel something 
like nip at the back of your neck. <laughs> And you just lunge forward, flipping to the side as another one of the bodies of the ghouls kind of like shambles forward. Oh, no, no! Ziaka like uh, looks to it. I guess I, nap time's over. I swear I didn't touch anything. Looks back. <laughs> There's Skrung holding up a vase. Oh, fuck. Skrung, you wonder why I bully you. <laughs> Put it down. Ziaka, like, <laughs> just look over at Ziaka. Huh? He says that while this is, while this is kind of unorthodox, he has been sensing gladiatorial combat up above. That he it was that epic, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he did put on a hell of a fight. Congratulations, actually, by the way. Actually, I don't know if I've actually talked to you about He actually believes it. that since time has passed by and the collective one no longer values what's on this pedestal and the heart is more important, that if we can defeat a champion down here in combat, we can take one of these prizes. Whoa. Um. I mean, that sounds fun, but I don't know if uh, pertinent. <laughs> This this heart seems like it's keeping this island afloat. <laughs> I somewhat agree. I'd say <laughs> getting battle rage. <laughs> Nedra's just like shaking, like fighting. I know she wants to fight. What kind of champion doesn't have a mind? <sighs> I look over to Siaka. <laughs> Siaka is just looks over to you. I think it wants you to fight the collective one. It wants me to fight your god? No, that looks to the <laughs> statue. Doesn't seem like a fair fight if it doesn't have a heart. And also, the statue is holding up the ceiling. I feel like if you defeat it, we all lose. <laughs> Somehow it doesn't feel like a fair game. <laughs> this seems like one of those heads I win, tails we all die. But uh, that's what that's the challenge he posed, not me. I'll tell you what. In order to make this fair, I'm not gonna fight it until I get it its heart. As you say that, the one uh, the one ghoul that Ziaka was talking to before hands her a small wand that's in <laughs> hands the Hands her the heart. Hands her a small wand that's in the shape of a snake. Well, that looks pretty. You were right, guys. He is the wordy one. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. All right. So I look, he hands I look at Nedra. What do you think, Nedra? We'd rather have a fair fight, right? I guess. <laughs> uh, That's the spirit. <laughs> uh, Reluctant agreement. <laughs> the ghoul gives uh, Ziaka a small wand that, and explains to her that this will actually help her once a day guide her in the direction of where the heart could have gone. The, the heart is now completely off island because they can no longer feel the magic of it anymore. Oh, wow. So it wants her to be the one to have this wand, to point her in which direction it goes, and it also tells her that if it's close to the heart, it will turn into a living snake to find it. All right. Well, I think we have an adventure on the South Island to get to. Not on that island either. This thing is gone. It, we would be able to, the collective one would be able to feel it if it was on the island. So we're going to have to stop this lockdown or get through that lockdown to find the heart? Be that as it may, I need to speak to my people and quickly, but it seems that we have to find this victor first to end the lockdown. Hmm. So it would seem. And I suggest we go back to Mead for right now. Yeah, I was going to say. Pool our resources and see what his other teams have found out. Fantastic. All right, so you guys done here, or do you want to keep looking around? I, I look back at the statue. <laughs> <laughs> ah. 
statue just move? No. Okay. I'm being a but, shit. But no, nah, I look away and then Eloy it. sees it because he's the yeah. one that sees all the god shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? You see the collective one just go. I turn away and I just keep walking. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Guys, I want to go back up now. Let's go see Mead. Mead's a very nice man who is not, doesn't do magic stuff and doesn't scare me. Who is not a god as far as we know. <laughs> On our way back up the stairs, I'm going to talk to Nedra. Actually, I would like all you guys quickly, oh. now that you mentioned that, all of you quickly roll me a knowledge uh, religion check. Well, there's my luck. Nat 20. <laughs> 18. 15. You can't really, like, like you don't have the visual knowledge, but based on the statues you saw back at the uh, temple in town, you looked at the base form of, since it was too dark, you couldn't see the entire thing, but you right. saw the base form of the creature. It almost resembles Udoth. Okay. So you believe that the collective one is a variant of Udoth yeah. to this to the Yanti. Okay, so Risf might have been interested in this. He seems to like that Udoth guy. Udoth's the only god I know who hasn't sent rock slides on me. I'm fine with <laughs> Udoth. <laughs> Alrighty, so you guys head back up. Yeah. Well, did you did you take care of it? Third day sitting there just like what, what's going on? What are we doing? I know what we need to do to take care of it. It's Third. just not something we can do here. What do you mean we can't do it here? The, op the base of operations here. Yes, I know your base of operation is here, but we need to go get the thing that was taken. What thing? We went. We sent people down there, and the goose, the, the goose, the ghost the goose. was. <laughs> Damn it! The goose. <laughs> <laughs> the spooky roll, ghouls. roll, roll, and roll, uh, roll initiative to fight the dire goose. <laughs> I think we've had enough birds. <laughs> yeah, what are you gotta... talking about? The ghost was down there when we first got here. He was there telling us all kinds of gibberish. I say, first of all, there's no ghost. That's just a kindly old man that has a weird speech impediment. It's a ghost. Secondly, you weren't the first ones down there, apparently. Someone stole that thing's heart, and it's real upset about yeah, it. Yeah, before you filled this thing in with oil. There was a heart? There yes. was a gemstone in the middle of the ball that that thing was holding. The big statue in the middle. You mean that giant orb of lava? Yeah. Yes. I mean, I know we were sitting on top of an active volcano, but like... Okay, I guess. Yeah, something stole a gem that they refer to as the, the heart of the collective one straight out of there. That's impossible. When we came here, we were told uh, by our bosses that this place was safe to hold up operation. Well, they we, were wrong. That might have been true, but somebody really wanted to screw you guys over, I guess, and sink the island. I mean, did someone down there tell you about our rules about mutiny? I heard in passing. You wouldn't but... happen to have any rival circus groups that might have wanted to sink this island, did you? No, of course not. All right. We got rid of all of those. Oh. I inform him of the group of goblin men that were uh, trying to help, like, try offering me uh, offering me assistance with defeating Nedra in exchange for getting them down below. I, say, I ask if they might have something to do with this. No, but that's something worthwhile to beefing up security for. Well, Boys, you heard him. And a bunch of the goblins run out. Well, then I request, you, then I suggest you beef up your security. Meanwhile, we will, we will I'm going. That. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm going to need her to come with us. I point at Nedra. Yeah. <laughs> Holds up a contract. Well, that's neat. <laughs> uh, do you know you you know the? I mean, if you want to buy her, I guess we can get rid of her. Buy a person. I look at him. Yeah, buy a person. No, we want to say hello to her and take her with us. Well, sorry, kid. Her contract clearly states here that she's worth... Hmm, let me go down this list here real quick. Is he looking at that contract? No, he is looking at the contract. I'm going to punch him through that contract. Oh, no. <laughs> Roll the hit. Sorry, slavery is one of Wake's big... Uh, 18 hit. 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Third is an expert and dodges out of the way. <laughs> no, he's not even looking at me. I'm punching him through that contract in the fucking face. For nine damage. Third day is dead. She's worth. <laughs> Whoa! Now, Wake, I get it. Buying and selling people, the, the, the trade the, of slaves. Yeah, How many right. more do you have? <laughs> I grab him by the collar and look him dead in the eye. Ah! <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> Roll intimidation. Uh, with advantage or no advantage? No advantage. Okay. Uh, that is a 13. He is a gibbering mess right now because you have him held up and he can't form a coherent sentence. I throw him down to the ground. <laughs> Easy, Wake. Easy. I mean, wait, he, I mean, the last person who won, like, wait, like the last person who lost to Nedra, the, we ripped up their contract because they won. I mean, we could do that with her, but then that means you have to stay here for the contract. I'm sorry. It's it's Knife. He wants he wants a champion for the fight pit, though. I'll find you a champion. Okay. But she's coming with us. I mean, I I have to write this down in the contract, and someone's not gonna like this. You won't like it either. Hell, I don't like it because you broke a tooth. Third day, you were about to give us a price. <laughs> not that. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I want to buy her, but what was that number that was rattling around in your head before your tooth took its place? Because <laughs> we're not going to buy her, but maybe we can buy her out of her contract. I mean, that's what I was going to offer at first. That's what I figured, but you your, asshole! Wording, your wording angered my friend here. I, and turn, I turn back and I <laughs> just cock another. N N Nedra's just like, oh, are we fighting now? <laughs> She's she's got a chair ready to fucking throw down on third day. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And Faraday. strong are and we... red are now just like this against the wall. Because here's another thought, uh, fella. What's more important to you, this contract or this whole island? Because uh, there's a very good chance that if she doesn't come with us, this place goes under. She's just a tiefling. We we she came to this island. We had nothing to do. We don't care about this island. We'll just pack up and leave. If this place is really gonna sink, we don't have to be here. Okay, so let me get this straight. Your champion is more valuable to you than this whole operation that might sink into the ocean or get erupted up by a volcano. I'm not entirely sure how this is look, going to look, go down. Look, look, look. Oh, okay, listen. <laughs> roll, roll. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm roll. guessing diplomacy. Yeah, uh, or rather persuasion, uh, which I would have a modified twenty-two. Look, my boss brought her here and told us that we had to at least make sure that she stays within the company's guidelines. That's all we knew, and we know that if we go against the boss, bad things happen. I don't know, fellas. This is, uh, she she has a contract. It's not slavery per se. This is her job. I mean, I I got. I don't think they own her. Nedra, let me ask you a question. You really like punching people. I mean, are you happy here? Is this what you want to be doing, or would you rather travel around with us? Do I get to hit things and walk around? Oh, I am sure we will find stuff for you to punch. We have found plenty of things to punch on our way here. See, they told me that I can't really punch too many things, but if you're saying I can punch all the things, then... Oh, uh, boy, do I want to come along! All is a stretch, but a lot. <laughs> That's the reason why we're keeping here, you idiots! <laughs> I mean, you didn't punch that ghost snake downstairs. I, I mean, let me put oh, it to you, you this way. To. <laughs> here, you sit around, and you only see one place all the time, and they bring you people to punch. What we're offering is to go from place to place and find new things to punch, plus you get to see all kinds of different new places. That's why I like to travel around, anyway. Look, Just not the punching part, because I'm not so good at that. The issue here is that Nedro is A-OK -okay with doing that, but she's beholden to the contract as well. Yeah. She, she, for the longest time, has always believed that in the interest of punching. doing her job right and the interest of the Boar War Company, that she is doing a service by being here and punching what is given to her. 
But based on what Third Day just told you is that there's now a second motive as to why they're keeping her here. It's just that even he doesn't know. It's just that his boss said keep her here under jurisdiction of the Boardwalk Company. Anyway, again, you had a price, <laughs> and we've avoided it. I'm guessing if you had a number in mind, somewhere in that contract was a buyout. I'm standing there still glaring at him. Well, I wouldn't mind giving you the price number, but now with medical expenses for my face, it might go up a little bit. Mm, well then, as long as we're going in for a penny, I go she in. She picks up the chair. No, no! <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Now, 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 come on. We can discuss this peaceable like I, I cast cure wounds on his face. Okay, roll it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Communications have broken down! <laughs> Don't offer me. I can keep you near death. <laughs> Ooh, max. Nice. Uh, 12 hit points it heals. All right, he's back up to full. His face is back to normal. There's no blood. <laughs> now, here's the thing. We can go We can go round and round all day. He punches you in the face. I heal your face. Oh, oh I'm, go, okay. I'm okay Oh, with go that. ahead. You can go on and on all day. I have an entire temple of people here ready to take you out. Oh, is that so? It is so. Wake, I love your moxie, and I agree. People are not things to buy and sell and own. But we need to get out of here alive. <laughs> Sometimes you have to turn a blind eye to an evil to come back for it later. We can fix this, just maybe not. Now, how about that price, son? But Nedra would be a hell of a hand to have around. <laughs> As you're well aware. Okay. Uh, you, yes, about that price. We keep saying the word price, price, price. I, I, I believe my friend wanted a number. He's going to give you a number, but <laughs> he's going to write it down on this paper. Yeah, after, after all that's been happening, we got a couple of extra rolls to go for. <laughs> Yeah, wow. This is happening now. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Diplomacy battle. Yeah, well, uh, well, no. Mr. Thurday was actually okay with giving the original price. Now we got the up price of five grand. Five thousand gold? What? What is that up from and why? <laughs> what? He punched your face. I healed it. It's fine. Now I'll have you know, Mr. Thurday... That I... <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> I have... I pull from my hand the signet ring of a duke. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to wield great power and wealth back in the mainland. This is the ring of the Lockwood Duke. One of the greatest dukes in all the lands. If you come bearing this ring to that facility out in... Okay, that's not bad. Uh, modified 22 in Deception. Which, by the way, that facility is going to require us to get off the island, and her getting us off the island will make it a lot easier. But if you go there, they have stores and stores of treasure. But if that's too much of a trek for you, I understand. I get it. You're a busy man. You have this whole thing to deal with. This ring by itself could get you upwards of 13 to 14,000 gold in most markets. And that's, you know, for people who don't know what it's really worth. Roll me diplomacy. That's in that one. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's a seven. Oh, thank God. That's a seven, which is not that much better, but it is not. It's six one. better. Uh, that would be uh, modified. That is a 13. But, again, I had that 22 in deception. <laughs> so he believes it is what it is, I hope. But maybe he's just not okay with the price, which we can 
fluctuate so long as he truly thinks it's a very special ring. <laughs> All right, so you wanted to roll deceit for the ring? Yes, the the roll. seat the seat was to prove that it was pretty good. Okay. Yeah, and uh, what it was. You, you got a what again for that? And that was a 20, 20, 22. Okay. He buys the ring, but he's not budging on that price. Okay. So I had said that it would be 13000 was what I suggested. Mm. Is, so that's the price that he is not or okay infinitely with? Infinitely more if he made a... He, yeah. He's not yeah. okay with that price. Okay. He, he's, he's not like, okay with the ring. He's, he's not okay with, he's not okay he's with not the okay ring with for that much. Okay. All right. You're really... You're killing me here. I'm, me? I'm selling. That's him. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you want to go back to it? Easy, easy. I'm working here, Wake. Okay. Uh, all right. If thirteen thousand is a little, a little too rich for your blood, and I, I understand. Again, busy man would be tough to, you know, go down the avenues to find people to buy this. <sighs> I could throw in a gold bar. This gold bar, mm. clang, along with the ring. Roll diplomacy with advantage. Eighteen. He'll take it. How Are much you... for the rest of your slaves? We don't have any more slaves. We just had the champion as a buyout prize. She's your problem now, and if Nyth comes for you, ha, that's your problem, kid. I'll make sure I, I'll let him know who sold her to me. <laughs> I don't think you're a problem, Nedra. I like you. I do too, Nedra. That's why I gave him my special ring in gold. <clears throat> Nedra's just like looking back and forth, just like, does that mean I get to go outside now? <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. Let's go. Yay. <laughs> wait, I wait. We need to get cotton candy first before we do. Of course. You read my mind. I got the, I got this whole bag of gray gold. How much cotton candy will that give us? She, like, takes your hand. I like you, Eloy. You're my best friend. <laughs> Don't worry. The gold is sold by an independent vendor. He doesn't get any of the money. <laughs> I know you'd be against us giving him more money. Alrighty, so you got yourself, uh, you bought yourself Nedra. <laughs> Hooray! As I'm walking out, I just kind of nudge you, don't worry, that ring is worthless. <laughs> I don't say anything, I just keep walking. <laughs> Might if we take a quick break right here? Go ahead. Sure. All right, well, we're back. I have pissed, uh, thoroughly pissed off a pirate lord at some point in time, but we'll move on from here. Alrighty, so you guys decide to make your farewells to the uh, to the temple. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. I, I'm sure most of you are totally fine people, especially Steve. I know you can hear this, Steve. <laughs> I love your cotton candy. You do good work, Steve. Come on back to <laughs> the fine day boardwalk place. I'm just staring, <laughs> staring at the costumes, making little notes in the notebook that I bought, just being like, oh, yeah, that'd be, but it'd be funnier if they were wearing, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, so you guys head out of the temple and walk back down the, uh, the pathway over towards the town. Yep. Uh, no incident has occurred. You guys make it back just fine. Uh, Nedra is just, like, awestruck at all, everything that's going on right now. It's like... <laughs> oh, wow, I haven't seen outside in, like, I don't know, three years? That upsets me. <laughs> I mean, they let me go outside every once in a great while, but, like, they wouldn't let me go this far out. I mean, I came in from the city. I, I, came, in, I came in from the town. That's where I was brought in at first. Well, you're with us now, Nedra. You don't need to worry about getting stuck inside anymore. Goody. Do I get to punch that thing now? She looks to the bird that's sitting on the on the on the vent on the uh, tree. Yes, Nedra. Yes, you do. <laughs> Go right ahead. She fucking lariats the tree. She knocks her face right into the tree and hits the floor. <laughs> I, I I offer the my bird hand. is the bird is unmoving. I offer my hand to help her up. She takes it and gets up. All right, and you know, Nedra, when it comes to ferocity and strength, I don't think I've ever met anybody as powerful as you, but 
How would you like to never lose another battle a day in your life? <laughs> I, I look at I look at her and I tell her, "You have a lot of power. You have a lot of strength, but when you're fighting, you act like a wild animal." And I know, isn't it great? What I'm saying is, if you have more control over your actions, you might never be defeated. Shut up. <laughs> I'm offering to teach you, Nedra. A disciple? Look, yeah. the way, look, the way you fight is incredible, but you can get stronger, you can get faster, you can be more precise. I look at that same tree that she just lariated. I'm going to attempt to punch like a small like hole into the trunk. Go for it. Well, hot damn, that's a 23. Well, you punch it, you remove your arm, and there's a woodpecker staring at you like, <laughs> The fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> that is precision. <clears throat> when you attack, you attack with just raw, blunt force. Now imagine combining those two. You could have taken this entire tree down. Oh my god. <laughs> she rolled a nat 20. <laughs> I look at her as she like puts her hand like straight through the hole no. that I punch. Or she, she, lo goes? she looks at the hole that you punched. She thinks of like trying to make something that's sizable of the same hole. So it's not like taking the whole tree down, it's just doing the hole. So she just goes like this, she looks at her hand. Like, kind of gauges the tree. No, that's not gonna work. I, sh I, show, I show her, like... Yeah, yeah, she makes, like, a knuckle palm, but she makes, like, a knuckle palm, but she only uses three fingers, because yeah. that's how big her hand is. <laughs> the entire tree, like... You know how, like, there's an entry full of... Uh, entryway for a bullet and an mm -hmm. exit for a bullet? <laughs> well, there's an entry, but the exit is the entire back end of the tree is gone. I look at her, I'm like, yes! Now imagine that all the time! <laughs> no, no. I, I tell her, yes, it works on people too, but... <gasps> oh, no, 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 You need to be able to control it. Meanwhile, I'm over here. Ah, oh, man, this is beautiful. The master-student relationship. Ah, oh, there's going to be so many fun plays with these people. <clears throat> Skrung just looks at you. That's the angle you're going to go with? It's yes! A, no, it's a good angle. I can see that. I mean, it's no the grumpy goblin who has no friends, but... <laughs> hmm. Scrung, look, don't worry. I'm trying to figure out a way to incorporate everyone in the stories I'm going to be telling. I'm sure you'll wheedle your way in there somewhere. <laughs> look, as long as you can get a story that just completes all the lies you could ever think of, that'd be great. <laughs> all right, you got it, buddy. And Scrung was helpful. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I can see that logic. I don't even care. <laughs> Alrighty. So after all this, Reg and Ziaka are just sitting there just like, are we done? Can we like <laughs> stop breaking things now and go back? I, I want to like go back to civilization. Yeah, Wait, we can what, keep what walking. We, what are we going to do with her? Everyone looks to, like she looks to Ziaka. Are you even like, are you okay with going into town? Well, I've never actually been in a human society town before. Mm. This one seems much... I, I look at her, I'm like, trust me, this one's much more accepting than you'd expect. Really? That's kind of weird. We usually don't accept any other races outside of the... outside of the clergy. We're kind of very selective with who decides to come in to be part of the collective one. Well, Ziaka, we're about to introduce you to the amazing concept of open-mindedness, where people will accept other ideas and, uh, you know... Not immediately, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, throw them out for it. Exile? Exile, that's what I was thinking. Never heard of an exile before. Usually this island was just us before the humans came along. Oh well. well trust me, not every, not every village is as friendly to people like you and me, but this one's fine. Yeah, you, like, you could just see, like, she, what she's doing is she's having, like, a mental dance with herself, like, trying to be, like... Is it cool that I do this? Is it going to be against the clergy? Is it like, am I okay with going in here? 
the humans kind of took over the Northern Islands, and I don't feel like this might be a good idea. What if I'm not accepted? It's I, like a big internal battle is going on, and it's it's like physically visible. I tell her that if she feels really uncomfortable there, all she has to do is talk to the governor of the town. Just tell her this. Just tell him the story, or at least what she knows, and then she can leave if she so chooses. Roll persuasion. It would just make everybody's job much easier. There's my nice roll. Uh, that's charisma, right? Yep. 19. She accepts this, and she'll tag along with you guys as the, you as uh, you see fit. So the first place you guys decide to get back to is the Flappy Stingray, because yes. before you actually get to go up to talk to Mead, you'd have to go up the hill that's behind the place. <sighs> I go get a change of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. my room. Yep, so you uh, head back to your room. You get all your stuff together. Mary's the only one who's there. Haros is gone. Hi, Mary. I say as I'm on my way in. Hey, sweetheart. Uh, you've been gone for quite some time. We yep, were... I, I point at Nedra. This is Nedra. <laughs> She's, uh... Are you hungry? She's hungry. <laughs> she does not fit inside this room. <laughs> she has to hunch over. And she might need a chair. <laughs> you sure it's a chair and not a bed? I mean, maybe both. Do you have one available? <sighs> she like just... I'll see what I can do. Just you sit down right there. Try not to break anything. All right. So you watch as Risp, uh, Onslow... And Pliskin come into the uh, building as well. We were kind of worried that the rest of you wouldn't show up. Uh, Mead was kind of scared that you tried to find a way off the island, or we couldn't prove your innocence. I come back down after getting my after getting my change. We just needed to make a pit stop. This is Nedra, by the way. <laughs> Hi. She like she raises her hand and knocks a clock off the wall. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I attempt to catch the clock. <laughs> Acrobatics. Seven? It lands on your head. I, I examine it. Did it break? Cuckoo. <laughs> yeah, you open the flap and a little cuckoo bird comes out. <laughs> Still working. See, I, I did a good. Good job, Eloy. <laughs> all right, so now that you're all here, where the hell have you been for the past three days? We had to make a stop at that temple. We learned... Some not great stuff, and we uh, we learned more about the identity of the man that we believe is in charge behind all of this stuff. All right, that's good, but let's get down to the main reason why you guys went out there in the first place. Was there a naval band out on the northern side of the island? I thought these guys would have reported that by now. I look over to them. <laughs> it's like you see, Risp, Risp and Pliskin. Yeah, and yeah. Onslow's just like, I'm just waiting to get paid. And Pliskin's just like, I want to go get some sleep and drink something. I want to go pray to, like, every god. Yes, there was a naval band up yes, there. Yes, there's, uh, there's a navy there, and I have, we have information on that to report to Mead as well. Well, I hate to break this to you, but Mead and Haros are off doing their own little shindig, so you're going to have to report to me for some time. So what did you learn? All right, well, I learned that they're about ready to storm this place if they can't find the guy involved. <laughs> they can try. They can absolutely try. That'd be ridiculous. I agree, but I I do not. Well, especially without their armory. <laughs> yeah, we uh may have made a distraction on our way out. Uh, from might have been a bit intel. bigger than we anticipated. <laughs> they had quite a bit of gunpowder and uh, it lit up pretty nice. I pull out a few mithril swords and a bunch of stuff. <laughs> the rifle, the blunderbuss I got, the pistols. But the real treasure was the friends we made along the way. Absolutely. Like right. Nedra. Again, have we introduced her? Right, Nedra. Onslow. Onslow. Nedra. Nedra. Onslow. <laughs> They're staring at each other, and Onslow wants to run out the front door right now. <laughs> hey. Oh, shit. <laughs> hey, Nedra. Remember that thing I taught you? Uh, dancing, where you punch the ground real hard with your feet? You want to go outside and do that with me? <laughs> okay, let's go do that. Let's go that. I I give give Onslow a look. Yeah, let's go do that right now. And I take Nedra out into the. Yeah, you do that, son. <laughs> and and start playing the flute so she can dance around. <laughs> I look at Onslow. She, she's my new student. 
<laughs> Son, I told you about the tiefling woman that I didn't want to have any sort of resemblance with, right? He well, beat I... her in a one-on-one -on -one fight. It was insane. Yeah. You did what now? <laughs> Let me set the stage for you, my friend. Yes, craft the tale. <laughs> uh, with my 18 in performance, I regale the amazing battle between Wake and Nedra. A clash of titans for the ages, unlike anything anyone's ever seen. Now, what are you going to do about the fact that she wants to beat the crap out of me? I think she's more interested in beating the crap out of me now that I beat her. Tell that to her. I can see that gleam in her eyes. She wanted me dead. The thing is, she wants to kill everything, and we found a way to focus that. And Mary just looks at you like, <laughs> and you brought her in here? But with her steadfast sensei, he'll find a way to focus that power and anger into the villainy of the world. That's stupid, but fine. It's your problem then, I guess. <laughs> So you did find a naval band. That's good. At least now we know we can send a couple of folks up there to try and clean up this mess before they decide to leave. Yep. But, <laughs> I mean, you said you blew up their munitions, right? All of it, including all their magical equipment? Uh, is this stuff magic? I, I hold out these things that I brought. This is just mithril. The Navy's just nothing but pure magic. They would surely have an arsenal of magical weapons like wands, staves. Ah, uh, I point to Risf. He does have a. St we did get. We did get a staff, and I did probably burn a couple of them. Risf kind of just like looks left and right. He doesn't have the staff with him. Well, he does have a staff. I gave it. To Where'd you put the staff, Risf? What staff? Risf. <laughs> that was such a bad lie. He couldn't. He couldn't lie out of that at all. You got a nat twenty on my. Uh, <laughs> or uh, I guess it would be. In, he's in, he's inside on that he one. Is, like the shifty eyes are just all over this kid. He wants. Yeah no. <laughs> yeah no. He he's hyperventilating. He's he's like. It's like a kid visibly put his hand in the cookie jar and you're looking at him. He's like I don't do it. Rest for the staff. I lost it. <laughs> Where'd you lose it, Risp? At Father Dorrance, yes, I lost it at Father Dorrance. Well, that time I rolled a nat one on This uh, time I'm, insight, I'm, I'm looking so. at him square in the eye. We've had many a conversation, <laughs> he and I. Uh, this is wisdom, right? Yep. Okay, so that's a 14. I don't know, Wake, his story checks out with me. You can't read him, he's too scared. It's like it's like it's, oh I know he's lying no though. no no you you can no it's like you you can like feel that like your presence of looking at him is scaring him that he might be garbling the truth because of how you're like approaching him oh gotcha yeah he is so nervous he might just be uttering the truth look either way we destroyed some staves he had one now he does not have one I gave it to Father Dorn that's what I did I believe you I, I gave believe it you. I, I gave it to we, Father Dorn Chris, it's okay. You have your reasons. I look at him. <laughs> like, in, in a you-can-trust-me sort of way. I believe you took it, but if, you know, Father Dorn doesn't have it, then there will be some real problems. So, you know, I hope it's, you're telling no, me. No, he has it. He has it. He absolutely <laughs> has it. Look, there's no problem. It's not like we were going to use it anyway. It yeah, but it sounded really useful. <laughs> it did. But he wanted it instead of, you know... The kind of stuff. All right, I'm sorry. I broke it up into a bunch of pieces and sacrificed it to every god at the temple. Oh, that's fine. I was oh. just worried the navy got it. Okay, as that's... long as your gods are happy. You're not mad about that? No. No. Oh. Oh, blessed be. You you watch him as he like hits the floor. He doesn't even take a chair. He just <laughs> hits the floor on his butt, just like. I was he way can't more believe. nervous that you were some kind of crazy turncoat or something, and you handed it off to someone who could use it against us. On the record, I never believed that. <laughs> You thought that? It's not that I thought that. It's just that I was worried that's what might have happened. I can't trust anyone. <laughs> not even yourself? De definitely not myself. <laughs> that's a sad thing. Hey, yeah, you know, uh, behind every uh, clown is someone crying. So, yes. Did you hear that? He called himself a clown, you fucking clown. I sure did. And clowns make a hell of a living on stage. Not that you know anything about that, Skrung. <laughs> I stick out my tongue. 
fucking goddammit. <laughs> Here's Skrung. You see Pliskin. <laughs> if we just count the interactions you two have had, I think you have this weird Three Stooges rivalry going. <laughs> Can't That's see what I'm veering can't into. Can't see without my glasses. Oh, no, we can fix that. How's that work? Yeah. What's that? Two dirty fingers. Ah. <laughs> All righty. So, as you were. All right. So, yes, we blew up a couple of their magic items, and we found this, well, bucket helmet. Eloy, do you want to show them what you got? What? I'm out here dancing. All right. Well, Eloy has a bucket helmet. <laughs> We have, we have a couple of their mithril items. I would actually like it if you brought this to Mr. Rattles over at the magic shop. All right. I he guess actually we haven't might... really met him yet. No, you haven't, which is kind of upsetting because he might be able to help us out in a lot more ways that we can't. We may not have the time and energy to actually send a scouting mission to do all this, but with his help, we might be able to take what we have and be able to scout out through magic means. Good, sort of I like... found another one of these. I pull out the tumor. Oh, Lord. Yeah, he was growing them in a cave. He was... Go what cave? Yeldon Cave. Yeldon Cave. That's why the rat folk haven't reported back to me in so long. Oh, <sighs> trust me, you don't even oh, want to yeah. know. <laughs> they... Well, you probably do want to know. I do want to know. <laughs> they are this all... is something I have to bring to the followers of Deimos about. Yeah, uh... Well, if you, if you want to talk to them about the fact that a good majority of their men were hacked up, put in buckets, uh... Turned into slime monsters. And oh my shit! What yeah, happened? It was fucking awful. Mary's just like beside herself right now, just like this is this is worse than I thought. And I hand her the piece of the diary that I had from, uh, well, I assume it's from Victor. Yeah, she takes the diary and starts reading it over. What is he trying to do with this? She hands it right back to you. Take this. To Rattles immediately. All right, let's go see Rattles. Hey, Nedro, we're gonna meet a magic man. That is the opposite of call of making her happy. <laughs> Have you learned nothing? It's okay, Nedro. We can stay outside for that one too. We'll punch the ground with our feet some more. <laughs> Any idea if the Gimme Brothers are on the way there? Cause uh, I've got five pounds of feathers that I've been dying to hand them. They uh the game like the Gimme Brothers are in the mag like the magic oh, we'll, shop, we'll, the we'll Gimme Brothers, the temple. <laughs> that's all in like the market district, so it's pretty close by to everything. Now we'll go to them after we report to <sighs> Now the Onslow magic is man. just like Bye. now son, this is all well and good, but I've still yet to get paid. We'll get you paid as soon as As soon as Mead gets back, I'm sure he'll pay you. Come on. After all we've been through, I know you can stick through this a little bit. Oh, by the way, did Nedra bring, uh, bring her trophies with her? Uh, yes. I hand I hand him old Cletus's arm. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little something. You like watch his grin grow. <laughs> I thought you'd appreciate. Any pot? He's like. <laughs> Lead the way, son. All right. <laughs> to Mister How Rattles. However. At this point, Mary's just like, no, you're not. I want this to be as light on people as possible. You three seem to have the most about this. I want you three and one other person to go along with you. I want to keep this light in case something goes south, and I have a really bad feeling it's going to be. So everyone else is going to stay here. You three Take one other person with you and go. I feel like if we I'm, I'm leave vote, Nedra, we have to bring Nedra. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like if we leave Nedra, you're uh, something's gonna get something, broken. Something's going to be broken, and, uh, and it might that, be on slow. Yes. Beat me to my own joke. <laughs> <laughs> something's gonna be broken, and it might be on slow. All right, fine. You can take the giant. She's a tiefling, but she's bigger than any tiefling I've ever seen. I'm trying to figure that out myself. I, I've only known two, and the other one was your husband, so I didn't know if maybe he was just a real small tiefling. No, he's average size for tieflings. Tieflings are... Well, you don't know much about tieflings, do you, Eloy? I know a 17 about them. <laughs> <laughs> you know that pretty much from what you know is that they are demon folk. They are legit like what happens when a demon has an offspring with a human being. 
Yeah, I, I mean, just just stories like like I know they can do the fire thing with their finger. That's real cool. What the fuck? Oh, right. You don't know is that there are lots of demons out there, Eloy, and they're all different in various shapes and sizes. <laughs> you thought the gods were scary, my friend. Ho ho. Yeah, we don't have any stories about demons where I come from, really. Like, just just talk from far away. We mostly worry about rock slides. I have no idea what kind of demon made this. This is unheard of. The one that hooked up with that giant, maybe? <laughs> Actually, that's a real good question. Hey, Nedra, you, you talked about how you passed through town on your way into the Colosseum. Where'd you come from before that? You know that other big island north of us? The place that everyone calls the mainland? Ah, I live there the at Eel's Gape. Do I have any idea where that is? Uh, roll me knowledge with disadvantage. Six. Uh, nine. Oh, wait, did I also have disadvantage? Yes. Okay. Uh, then that's a 16. Wow. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, Wake knows where it is. He's never been. <laughs> right there. Close to that. Uh, close okay, to that so. Port. Close to that. Close port. to that. Wow, we're all the way over here. Yep. That was a distance. You came a long way. And assuming the world is flat, you couldn't have gone Which the other way. Which, of course, it way. is. <laughs> well, oh, my well, God. Yeah. Are we doing that? <laughs> are we seriously doing that? Well, otherwise, all the water would spill off. Oh, well, yeah. Where would it go? Come on, we're men of me science me here. Rem <laughs> Remember all that respect Red had for you? That's all gone now. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Come on, no. Can okay, one fine. Of, can no. one of you be a flat earther okay, for I would see. I will. I will I, okay, I, the, I'm a the, navigator. I can't do that. I know. The, the world is clearly not flat, okay? I came from a big mountain that was way higher yeah, than you, the rest of the world. Some make, of it's up, some of it's down. You make a good point, Eli. It's all ziggy-zaggy. I'm just chuckling along. Oh, the material plate is zigzags. Thank you, Eloy. <laughs> <laughs> just like the idea of Ezra writing plays, and he makes sure the world is always flat in all of his plays. <laughs> As it is, in reality, they found the edge of the world and decided to turn back. They went to the edge of the world, went back to the other edge. <laughs> Mary has no idea what this tadpole thing is, is that it was referring to. So, yeah. again, she is just saying, okay, keep this light, take who you want with you, but the three of you plus one other person, go check on Rattles. All right. Uh, we'll, I think we'll, we're in agreement that it's Nedra. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll take Nedra to go check on Rattles, and I'm going to, uh, I, I, I assume Red and Ziak are okay hanging out together. Yeah, Mary, uh, Red and Ziak are pretty much hanging out right now, uh, Mary has been introduced to Ziaka and is explaining like how things work. Like Ziaka is completely like dumbfounded by all this shit that's around. Like, what is this thing? That's a chair. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? It you sit in it. Why don't you just sit on your own legs like we do with our coils? We well, don't they, have those. Well, they seem fine. <laughs> <laughs> to Mr. Rattles. All righty. Well, you guys can go to Mr. Rattles. However, I am going to give you guys the opportunity to go wherever you want to restock, refuel, do whatever you wish. So at this point, if you guys have anything else you want to do, buy equipment, buy clothing, buy what's, whatever you want. Are you want. saying Mr. Rattles is going to lock us into something? <laughs> yeah, this, this is your is, last chance. Yeah, would yeah, you like to yeah, save? Yeah, yeah, this is sounding like No, this the... is not a last chance would you like to save. It's just Once that... Once you go through here, you can't turn back. No, you can, you can obviously turn back, but <laughs> okay. if you want to grab stuff now, here's your chance. I was just playing when I said I wanted to swing by the gimme bros. No, I, no, I, we I, definitely have to. I, I have this... I, I, was, I have this thing that we have to show them. <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's not so much like we definitely can eventually, but I understand that they made it sound pretty pressing for us to talk to Rattles. Yeah. All right, you want to go to Rattles first? All right. So you guys head to the small... Uh, I'm going to inquire about the naval outfit we found. <laughs> you guys head over to the small tower-looking building. It's not like, not like big likes. You know how every, like, building here probably has about like two stories to it mm -hmm. this one's got three and not a lot of windows this literally looks like a mage's tower but it's all adorned it's very it it's, it's very it's adorned very well it's like got a, a rusted anchor on the side like it's very naval uh it has like a bunch of flowers around it a bunch of like plants and 
little like bottles of flasks hanging off the side of the wall. It's kind of it's very rustic in a way. So the, and there's a giant big wooden door. It's got the face of a gargoyle like in the shape of it, and a little metal ring that you can uh, bang on to like have like a knock on the door. Okay. Tonk tonk tonk. Ah, God, why? Ah, oh, that's why it's wrong. What do you want? What? Uh, we need to talk to Mr. Rattles. Oh, you want to see the boss? Yes. Uh, for what business? Uh, for the business of this. I pull out the tumor. Hmm. That is strange. You hear, and it opens up. Come on in. All right. I head on in. Neat. Yeah, you kind of walk in, and there's, like, a bunch of gargoyles all over the place. There, there are, like, little gargoyles carrying books, walking around. Uh, there's a gargoyle on the side of the wall actually reading a book and, like, jiggling a potion with his other free hand. Uh, there's a gargoyle kind of sitting off on the side, checking inventory, sweeping up. Well, a 15 in perception. Do I see anything special? All Do right. any of them sound like Keith David? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You want to roll uh, perception for what are you looking for? Uh, just looking around, just to see, like you know, if anything jumps if anything, out, like, at jumps him. out at me. This um, is all weird to wake. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the most part, apart from the fact that there's a bunch of stone constructs just walking around, like they're very ornate too. They're very fresh. They're not like they're century-old gargoyles. These are like really like well-made and possibly like. Like, just crafted stuff. I was going to say, these aren't the first stone constructs we've ta- walked around, but that was Punchy Face's adventure, so <laughs> never mind. We haven't seen these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, you take a look on the walls. There's a bunch of vials on the side. There's a rack with a couple of staffs, but not a lot. Like, the vials outweigh the amount of, like, s- staffs and wands that are there. Okay. Because, not, like they said before, not everyone in this town is really accepting of magic, so it's kind of like... It's there for display. No one's really going to buy any of these things. Uh, you look off to the side. There's uh, a whole side of the wall is filled with books, a bunch of uh, small little libraries off in the corner. There's actually, like, three kids sitting there, like, letting a, a gargoyle teach them some stories. Ooh. Hmm. And then a little bit more morbidly, there's body parts and uh, little <laughs> p- uh, bits of animal and, like, taxidermies all behind the uh the front desk from what you can tell when you walk in you see like a giant desk and it looks like there's two desks one where there's people can sit down and use like a mortar and a pestle to play around with alchemy there's a couple of cloths some uh, extra tools to just work on uh, creating potions and then behind that is the front counter where there's like an array of skeletons and uh a bunch of uh, bits and pieces of like creatures' eyes, some uh, uh, like fleshy bits of stuff like floating around in little uh, little jars. And there's also a brain in a jar too. I poke hmm. Nedra. Hey, see, they keep trophies too. <laughs> she goes to reach for one of them. No, 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 no. no, no. no. Uh, I think we have to buy those. Actually, hey, no touching. Oh, that was one of the skeletons. <laughs> ah. Wow. Is he for sale? That would be an amazing showpiece. Quite a puppet they have there. <laughs> oh, thanks. You like it? I was uh, kind of thinking that would be a cute little disguise for the kids. You see a little, you, one of the skeletons like kind of just like unhinges itself from the a wall. Costume puts puts on a little robe, a very ornate robe, and like he's wearing actually a gentleman's like pea coat sort of get get up, but he's not wearing any pants, so it's like pea coat gloves belt and now he's putting on the cloak and he's got he's got a little monocle on him too <laughs> mr rattles i assume you'll be right all right well we've been told to come talk to you that is fascinating get up you have <laughs> mm. oh well thank you it's uh very nice the gimme brothers made it for me mm. gonna have to talk with them later too anyway uh i've been told to talk to you about this i set down a tumor i found it's several of these in yeldon cave Oh, you're the errand boys, aren't you? For lack of a better term, yes. <laughs> okay, good. No, this is very good. Please, please. Uh, uh, guys, uh, kill the lights, shut the doors, do everything you can. You watch as, like, the gargoyle door kind of just goes, <laughs> and it zips closed, and there's just a wall. I just like and the, the idea of the gargoyles. And the light that was from the outside 
turns into a starry sky, uh, sky, uh, sorry, night sky when you look outside of it. Whoa. Yeah, don't worry. We'll be here for like a few minutes. You're, okay. We, this, is, this is purely just to keep everything secret. Gotcha. Oh, oh, the kids are here too. Shit. Mm. Yeah, I was wondering what, uh, uh, okay. I have an idea. Uh, hey, kids. Yes, Mr. Rattles? They go, they go wide-eyed and just stand there frothing at the mouth. Ha! Ah, is that healthy? Is that good for them? They'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, don't worry about it. They'll be, they'll be fine. Could have just had them leave. Um, but not now. They would have been lost <laughs> into the vo vacuum of the void. That probably would have been bad. It would have been fun to explain to Mead. I would have had fresh corpses, but it still wouldn't have been a nice thing to do. Yeah. Nedra, don't touch anything right now. <laughs> She's she's looking at the brain in a jar right now. Right, Hello, the... Steven. Hello. Ah. Okay, I guess that's safe. <laughs> guys, guys, did you meet Steven? My name's Fredward. Fredward. Yes. It's a good name, Fredward. Fredward the brain. I was once a man. All right. Well, now <laughs> we've met him. You have a very interesting shop, sir. Ah, well, it comes with the territory. A lot of people don't like what I do, especially when I'm one who dabbles more in necromancy. Right. <laughs> well, that, don't, don't look yes. at me like that. Just because I'm a lich doesn't mean that it takes away my moral compass. I've, look, I have, I have no problem with what you want to be. He well, doesn't that's, believe in you. <laughs> well, that's good because, unfortunately, a lot of people in this town like to believe that just because of my profession and the fact that I'm a lich kind of makes me evil. It's not the same. When you make yourself a lich, you're making yourself undead for the pursuit of knowledge. You're not really doing it to make yourself evil. You're just continuously making yourself immortal so you can learn more things. So Nothing you... evil about that. Yeah, see? Yeah. Immortal. Not dead. Immortal. Oh, I'm purely dead. Here, look. See, check this out. <laughs> he, like, pulls a rib off. I'm completely dead. I'm undead as all get out. Everything around me is an illusion. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Where are the mirrors? He, like, looks at you, <laughs> takes the rib. Like knocks you on the head. Did you feel that? No. <laughs> I just think I did. Roll deceit. How? No, nah, that's a two. <laughs> <laughs> no. I say holding my head. The rib is sticking out of your eye. No. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's take a look at this. He like... I also hand him the... Uh... Uh, note that we found in the same. Ah, he yeah, takes a look at the page. note very well. You hand him the note and he begins to read it. Hmm. Ooh, this is actually very, very good that you brought this to me. He rips it up. Whoa! Now, now, now. Calm yourself. Everything will be fine. He pulls out a little uh, vial, starts pouring liquids into it, takes the brain. You're gonna need that for a second. Puts the brain on top of the vial. <coughs> <coughs> Fredward, no! <laughs> I remember my story. <laughs> Gosh, I hope he'll be okay. I don't think he will. <laughs> act, act one was I was once a man, right? Okay, <laughs> I think I got this story. <laughs> <laughs> Takes out a knife. God, get it in there, you bitch! Fuck! <laughs> Didn't realize magic okay, was so good. physical. All right, uh, could you hand me one of those uh, clothes of olives, please? Ah, oh, sure. Do I know what a clove of clove of olive is? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, hand me the clove of garlic. Oh, I apologize. He, there's like a like. Remember when I said there was like plants and shit and like all the vials yeah. and everything? There's like alchemy ingredients there. There's like a but there's some garlic right there. I'm assuming I can just reach for one and give it to you. This isn't a roll situation. <laughs> roll an acrobatics. Oh no! <laughs> oh, you uh, made it a roll situation. Fourteen. The void. <laughs> you see, as uh, one of the gargoyles kind of like jitters up. Ah! Oh, thanks. You're welcome. I'll never get used to this. And I'm, and I'm a fey being. You hand him the you hand him the garlic. He breaks it in half. I can't taste. What's it? <laughs> Can I hire you? <laughs> Uh, it's good for the kids sometimes. So I mean, they're kind of starry-eyed and like looking at like full Gorbeth right now, the Lord of our, of Lord of Madness. But it'll be fine. Uh, it'll learn them. It'll learn. It'll learn them good. 
He uh he starts swishing it around and then he pours it into another giant like orb like a uh, vial. He pours it in, like starts like scratching at it with his finger. Do I have it with me? Rattles Magorium's magic emporium Shit. over here. One second, I think I actually left it off. Oh no! Uh oh. It's gotta grab a prop or something. Or a picture. <laughs> a picture indeed. This appears in the well, orb. This appears in the orb. Ooh. Ooh. Would that be our boy Victor, perhaps? Perhaps. Yeah, let's... There we go. Yeah. Striking fella. Looks like freaking Nosferatu. <laughs> <laughs> I assume he's supposed to. I mean, he's been dabbling in necromancy. And you said you had the uh, little bit of uh, tumor, yes? Yeah, I set it on the table. Uh, it's, just, it's a rather distressing thing, this. You know what this is, right? Uh, as far as I'm aware, it's a bit of an abyssal. It's an abyssal parasite of sorts. Of course, but do you know what the abyssal is? I'm from the ocean, so maybe. I got uh, a that 20. is a. You so got a nat 20? <laughs> Yeah, I got, I got an 18. Well, then please tell us the answer. <laughs> really I'm not being a dick. I want you to actually try to explain it. Uh, they seem to be dark creatures from beyond our void of understanding that uh, are being pulled into here via either these tumors or dark magic. You got some of that right, kid. All right. You're kind of right about them being pulled in here by dark magic, though the concept of dark magic is kind of funny because I'm a living being of one. But the thing is, is that this is the world rejecting magic. Hmm. So it's a magic defense mechanism. More or less, the world, you know, obviously, I don't need to tell you boys, you've kind of been on a mission about this whole naval stuff and how they're really in tune with their magic and whatnot, yes? Yes. That's a load of bunk. They've been trying to hide the fact for years now that... The world's rejecting how much magic they're using. They like to you to believe that it's the main power source of this entire world, but this is what happens when you use too much, and this is after millennia of buildup. So magic is causing this to happen. The too world... much too much use of it, yes. That's a good thing none of us three know how to do magic then, huh? It's unfortunate that a lot of their ships are run are vorpals. And those run completely on good chunks of it. Maybe even city-sized versions of arcane magic. Great. Great indeed. And now someone on this island, and based on the imagery of that boy's outfit, he seems to be part of the Navy, and he's pretty well-versed in actually ripping the Abyssal out from nowhere. Based on the information you gave me, it looks like he's trying to revive something or... Like, bring about something to bring himself into good graces with the Navy? And I don't know what his story could possibly be. He must have done something completely fucked up to get him banned in the first place. Well, it seems like it. I mean, they, they sure didn't seem very happy about him. Do you happen to know who they were? Um, I wrote down the name somewhere. That is kind of why we brought you on that mission, to get some info. I know there's an Admiral... Involved, uh, and then there's Captain. What the fuck? I wrote down this name, Captain uh, Avelo. Captain Avelo seems to be the one run running the Captain show down Avelo. There. All right, son. Uh, he looks at you. You uh, is that thing on your face? Is that is that hair? No, no, no. That's a that's a fin right here. Oh, hmm. It's a bit important. I need a piece of your head for something. I get I get a piece of I get some of my hair. Just poink. Oh, you do have oh it is hair. I do have like hair up here, yes, but That's, not here. Oh, I was kind of worried it was like some kind of weird fishy membrane thing. Here, thanks. No. He takes it. He like he starts futzing around with alchemic uh bis, uh bits and bobs here. Puts it back inside the uh seeing vial as well. Uh, there's not really a lot I can go on with just a name. I don't know who this person is either. If we had a physical bit of memory or something that tied to this Ave Lo, we could probably have some more on it. It's unfortunate, but... 
I can't really give you any more information about this Ave Lo, but if they got a grudge with this boy, then maybe we can work some kind of trade out with them if we want to be diplomatic about it. I heard that's what, uh, isn't that what Mead's off doing right now? Yeah, the captain's off trying to, uh, put a pin in all this naval stuff. I mean, we don't want, as much as we're not big fans of the Navy, I'm sure the captain doesn't want a couple of souls lost into the abyss. That, and also we'd have a lot more bodies to worry about when they come back as zombies. Yes, the ab yes, the abyssal monsters that they would produce. <laughs> so now, you were saying that they were cutting holes into the wrists and the temples and the wrists, chests? head, chest, just shoving stuff in there, just like I saw with the Goliath corpse on the ship that we were on the... Uh, That's so Bolton. bizarre because that fits the pattern of another creature's M.O. It's not something you would want to do for the Abyssal, but... Have you guys ever heard of Mind Flayers? Yes. I've heard of a 12. <laughs> I have heard of them. 19. Uh, yeah, I rolled, an, I rolled a uh, yeah, modified 20. And you, you two... You, rem you remember hearing stories about the spooky whispers of things, octopus things, dragging people into the ocean only to bring forth more octopus things. Yeah. And me, I may be, and maybe my tribe encountered one. Yes. My and parents you, would tell me horror stories. Yes, and you will remember that deeper, deeper, deeper into the wire waters, there are sunken cities of creatures with strange technologies and magic that form around a creature called the Mother Brain. Yeah, I've, Metro. I've heard of these things. They're from uh, the Elder Brain. I apologize. Yeah, the, el <laughs> the Elder Brain, deep, deep within the oceans. I've been told, well, as a baby, I was told never to venture into the water I can't see through. That's very wise because by the way all the body parts have been slit on these things, it almost seems like they're trying to put in their tadpoles into the slots to create another creature. And if the Abyssal's not really working for this man, especially with the fact that he's been using body parts to try and find a way to bring something back, and he's failing each time, I think he's getting desperate and trying to repeat what the Mind Flayers do. So it would seem. But that's impossible, because the only way he would ever know about a Mind Flayer thing is... He, like, turns around and looks on his shelf and starts, like, throwing things... You actually, like, all, all of you roll me dexterity, like, uh, acrobatics to dodge away from fucking shit he's throwing. I'm going to attempt to catch the shit that he's throwing. Oh, all right. Some of the stuff that he's throwing. I rolled a modified 21. I have this a feeling I'm pretty good. This is today. dex, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a modified 23. You guys are catching this shit tink, left tink, and right. Tink, tink, tink. Tink, tink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. It's here. He shows you a really disgusting-looking tadpole-like creature in gr in green goop. What is that? This is a tadpole to a mind flayer. See, what they do is, is they stick these into your brain and make you into one of them. They have no way of actually reproducing except with this process. So, I can't help but be afraid that if this guy has some access to mind flayer tadpoles... We could have a lot worse than just Abyssal on our hands. Especially if there's... Oh, Lord. I'm afraid now that this man may have found a Mind Flayer nest that's been abandoned. That's even worse! These things can turn into bigger threats if left alone unattended! Alright, so what do we do about it? What do we do about these? Where is this? I don't know. I'm going to... Oh, oh boy. This is kind of bad. Well, the captain's off taking care of... All the, all the diplomacy, all that stuff, that's great. No, no one cares asked about that. This is the bigger problem. I think I'm going to have to ask you boys to help me out on this. We're going to have to find this nest. we got to take care of this quickly. I don't know where to start, but with what you've given me and with what information I have, I think I may have, especially with these tumors, I can't play with them just yet, but it's good that we're on lockdown and sh very, very good that no one is leaving this town because I have a really sinking suspicion that this man might be taking people off the street and bringing them down there. Some Ooh. folks have been gone missing for the past couple of days. From your town? Yes. It's very dis it's very disconcerting. Huh. Bad enough, he has some kind of tie to the Abyssal. But now, with the idea that he might have ties 
to Mind Flayers as well. That's just all kinds of trouble that we don't want on this island. If, excuse me, Mr. Spooky Skelly Man. Mr. Rattles, please. M Mr. Rattles, I'm sorry. If, if Mind Flayers live down in the ocean, would the nest be underwater somewhere? I'd imagine so. It'd either be underwater or hidden underneath the earth somewhere. But we haven't been able to find anything like that. The followers, all, all the rat folk here, all the people of the Underdark have lived here for eons, and they've never had any encounters with Mind Flayers. It must be on the Southern Island. Well, with the island on lockdown, how do we get to the Southern Island? We're going to have to talk to the captain about this. Maybe get you guys over there as a pardon. But for the meantime, I suppose, take a rest. Do whatever you can to get some food, get some drink in you. Do whatever you fleshies can do. Go, go to the bathroom for all I know. Enjoy whatever time you have left because if we do have to deal with Mind Flayers and the Abyssal at the same time, oh, I think this whole island is dead. Not, yeah. not, not even just asking you lot to go down there and take care of the problem. But I could be looking at this very dire. For all I know, there could be just these tadpoles and nothing more and no mind flayers to speak of. But that frightens me even more so. We haven't been that lucky yet. <laughs> yeah, Wake is actually scared by this because he's, uh, he's remembering the horror stories from when he was little before he lost his first family. He, uh, he remembers hearing about like some people going missing and stuff like that when he was a kid. What are mind flayers? Nedra says. I, she's. Are you a tiefling? Yeah. Yes. This is Nedra. He like pull. He literally does this. Right, I'm gonna have to talk to you after this is all done. You hear that? Nedra, Nedra, was it? Yes. When this is all over, I'm gonna have to ask you to come here again. Yeah. Okay, do I get to punch things? No. I don't wanna come here. That's don't not, worry, yeah, it's not, that's not good incentive. I'll tell, I tell him that. All right, Nedra, I'm doing Dude. you a favor here. I'll tell you what, if we can come back here after all this is said and done, you and I, you and I can have another sparring match. Can you like let her punch like a gargoyle or two? Like those things seem like they're pretty solid. You know what? That's not a half bad idea. <laughs> Rippleton. What? Like one of the bigger, fatter ones, kind of like lumbers over. Hello. Oh, buddy, you don't like what I just signed you up for. <laughs> My name's Rippleton. He, this reminds me, we you, need to swing by Timothy's after you, this. You hear, you hear, you hear. <laughs> like rocks grinding as he closes one eye and then the other. Roll yeah, he seems like the kind of guy that blink one eye at a time. Nedra will roll. She punches his head clean off. That's about right. Thank you, ma'am. No. Oh. It worked out better than I thought. Yeah, I can just rebuild them as needed. I mean, I've been just making these boys straight out of stone. My bigger guards are uh, made of some sterner stuff. It's... Mr. Rattles, is there a way that we could arrange to take one of those with us? <laughs> <laughs> she just, she really likes punching things and having somebody around that can just take a punch, no problem. The moment they walk out of my, uh... The moment they walk out of this building, kid, they're going to just break apart. Oh, it was worth Shucks. a try. Thank you, sir. Well, don't be too distressed there. Uh, you seem like the kind who actually... I can actually sense some magic within you. <gasps> don't say that around I, him. I don't understand, sir. I do not... I, I, I'm not even any good at the druid ways, let alone magic. Look, I know we're going to have to rip this bandaid off at some point, but I don't know if now's the time. <laughs> well, be that as it may, kid, uh, you may not actually know it, but uh, I can feel some arcane surging through you, and it's uh, it's pretty dormant. I mean, you've been looks like you've been trying to block it off for some time. But in, in any case, 
Um, you seem to be the type who likes magic. In some regard, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's pronounced music, the thing that I like. Right. Well, if you like, uh, I could construct maybe a small, small gargoyle for you boys for a nominal fee, of course. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. We kind of have a lot of things to worry about in our hands. Yeah, a little. A little, yeah, a, a <laughs> little. So, how about this? When this is all said and done, you come back here, I might actually make you a small gargoyle. All right. That'd be nice. I mean, uh... What do you think, Nedra? Something you can infinitely punch? Oh, no, not infinitely. Okay. <laughs> finitely punch. What does finite mean? It means you can punch it sometimes, but then it'll break. Isn't that the point of punching things? There you go. Hey! <laughs> All righty, boys. Well, unless you guys want to buy anything of magical sorts... Oh! Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry. One second. He, like, opens his mouth. You hear a ghastly scream as bolts of light jump out of his eyes and his mouth. The light envelops the entire room. The sunlight's back. The door's back ah, to normal. We're home. The kids are like, ah, ah, what? And they go back to listening to their story. Uh, before we go, I do have one thing I wanted to ask you about. What's that? I have a sneaking suspicion that I have figured out most of what this ring is for, but I still haven't gotten it properly appraised and looked at by someone with quite your magical expertise. You know what's up with this ring? It gets, it glows when it gets hot, and uh, I don't get burned. Huh. Just really, honestly, I think ah. I figured out what oh, it does. Jesus. I just like a name. <laughs> ah, might be a proper identified job. Uh, tell you what, if you want to drop 100 and come back here tomorrow, I can give you a name. All right, that sounds good to me. That goes for all of you. If you got anything that needs to be appraised, you can leave it off here, and I'll get it to you. I <laughs> look at my mimics. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He rolls arcane on you. <laughs> he looks at your finger. <laughs> no, no, no. Pull it back. <laughs> Pull it back. He takes it. No, no. I don't know. Be careful, he likes eating what you are. What do you mean? Tends to take fingers to give you keys and bones. I hold out the uh, bronze bar that it spat out last time it ate a finger. Oh. This is one of Yeldon's work. Yeah. Yeah. I did a little research about Yeldon. Uh, some poor bastard mage who was really into the idea of becoming a pirate. Uh, didn't make a lot of friends, so... Well, he, he certainly built... made a lot of friends. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. He built himself a lot of friends. He didn't make real friends. He just kind of built them. And, uh, <laughs> kind of went a little mad doing that. Well, now they're my friends, right, Kevin? <laughs> what not? How'd you get under my belt? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, sure. I can, I can tell you truths. All right, perfect. This does remind me, uh, Mr. Rattles, you seem like the knowledgeable sort. Any idea where the stuff that you put in a mimic that it eats goes? <laughs> the place we were just at. Oh, okay. So if we, like, looked out there, would we eventually see some of the stuff that was eaten by mimics? Eh, mimics, otherworldly creatures. We pretty much just entered the world of full Gorbeth. Oh. Roll religion if any of you want to know what the fuck that is. Seven. I got an eight. Nine. Wow, it's gonna nope. be nine. <laughs> Not you? I only got a seven. Nope, none of you know what this creature is. <laughs> if See, it's I told you, we could use it for waste removal. <laughs> if it's, re if it's religion, then you're probably gonna have to ask Risf. Or Father Dorn. Fair enough. I hold my hand out so I can have Lancey back. Ah, yes, of course, here you go. Welcome back, Lancey. Shoop. What I was uh, told is that Yeldon liked to make mimics so much is that he made a lot of things, maybe even a ship, but that's never been found. A ship mic? A ship -ic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and blab your jokes out. As long as you don't make skeleton puns, I'm happy about it. Didn't I don't find him humorous. God damn it! <laughs> Wait, I got didn't nothing. you have a treasure map that, that led to a mysterious ship? I had something that I... I was really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I pull it out. Oh, yeah. Where'd you get that from? 
Uh, some dwarf that I beat at gambling. I think his name was oh. Gelfie, Gilfer, Gulfer. something. That one. Yeah, he's a, he's a con artist from one of the co uh, bard colleges. Yeah, well, I beat him. Fair and not fair. How about let's take a look at it. He, like, grabs it from you. Not, okay, Mr. Grabby. Listen, do you want things done or not? <laughs> it's a map, but go ahead. It's a map of the southern island. Yeah. I've been trying to figure that out myself. I pull out my cartography equipment. Hmm. Well, I don't know that much about it either. Uh, do you know anyone who's from the Southern Islands? Yes. Oh, you do? Yeah, we made a uh, acquaintance of a snake woman from the tribe down there. Oh, one of the auntie, huh? Yes. Oh, at least it was uh, pure blood, right? Yes. Wait, no. What do you mean, no? It was no. one of the off branches. The pure-blooded ones are the ones that walk around on legs, right? Yes. Yeah, no, she, she's she got snake bottom. A Molson? Yeah, that one. And she didn't try to convert you? No, she just really wanted gold. Huh, what a strange little world. Usually they just snatch people up from out of nowhere and just bring them to their temples to turn them more into Yanti. Oh, well, you learn something new every day. Probably look into that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if you'd like, you could also leave that map here and I'll see if it's real or not. I mean, I have no reason to distrust you. <laughs> All right. I mean, there were some things on my map that weren't really matching up with that map, but that just might be a more accurate map than mine. Well, not to be... Uh, that's not true. I actually have heard that the island to the south is a... Unless you have someone who knows how to traverse it, I hear the island moves. Well, that might be the reason. And I don't mean the entire mass moves. I mean, like, everything on the island changes each day. That sounds like it would be really hard to map. So it would. <laughs> I just toss my cartographer's equipment back down. <laughs> but it's magic of some kind. Something in the forest is doing it. What it is, we don't know because we haven't had a time to look into it. Maybe that could be your job. You might get a pretty penny from it from the Carver's Guild. Well, I'll see what I can do about that. Also, I found this. I pull out the goblet that I got from the uh, uh, man maw. Oh, like, yeah. I don't know if this thing is magic or anything. I, I can't tell. I mean, it looks nice. It's money. Yeah, that's what I figured. Well, if you want to pawn it off to me, uh, I guess I could use the residue that's on this thing and the jewels. I'll give you 500 for it. Okay. 500 for goblet. 500 more gold. Now, are you sure you're just not into magic or don't want to learn anything about it? Because I can really just feel it well inside you a little bit. I mean, are, are Will-O-Wisp made of magic? Because they really love my music. Why, don't you, why don't you show yeah. them Will-O-Wisp? Be like, hey, Nedra, let's go over here. Let's let's listen to the story these kids are talking about over here. I, I ushered and Nedra here, away from And the... here we see the story of the ugly duckling. <laughs> His name... Was a sad gargoyle named Fertibutter. <laughs> All right, so I've ushered Nedra away, so she's not going to get scared by the magic you're about to throw at her. Will o wisps. So here's what I figured out: there, there's all those will o wisps out in the swamp, right? And they, they they flit around and don't do much, but they love my music. And when I play my music for them, they'll do just about anything I want. Watch this. A very, a very competent spell of Fae Fire. I like how you uh, have them perform. Well, I mean, it's it's a song that I play, and it, it makes them real happy, and they want to dance around. Well, that's because you're actually using your will inside of you to make it dance around. You're willing it to do so, son. I, I mean, in a sense. I mean, look. Look at me. I'm willing my hand to move. Is, is that magic, too? No, that's you just being a goofball. <laughs> right. Well, sometimes I'm a goofball with my flute, though. And you're a goofball with your magic, it seems. N no. 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 Now, Feel. my... Feel. <laughs> <laughs> the hair is clinging to that Band-Aid. <laughs> now, you just told me that... See, here's the thing. I grew up, and, and my elders and my, and my daddy told me that magic was... 
Not, not, no offense, sir. I know you're kind of made of it and bones. I'm made of necrotic magic. We can say that. Okay. Well, when I was growing up, everybody told me that magic was wicked and sinful, and the only the only kind of good magic was praying to Old Lady Big Rock Mountain so she wouldn't crush us with rock slides. And now you're telling me that people use too much magic, and and the whole world's gonna gonna explode into evil creatures or some such. And I don't want to be doing that. You casting fairy fire will not set upon the end of the world, son. Eloy, we've gotten to know Red. Red's not evil, right? With my, uh, 24 and persuasion. <laughs> Roll insight. <laughs> uh, 18, so. Well, that, that, that's true. Red is not evil. She seems like a very nice lady, and, and... Oh, you mean the sorceress? Yeah. Hmm. Odd one, that one. She was very interested in, uh, Dampiers and how they worked. I don't know what those are, but she seems awful nice. And, uh, you know, Wake's got his key stuff. That's kind of like uh, magic in a way. And Mr. Rattles here has been incredibly kind. I'm not saying you are a magical being, Eloy, but God forbid, Ole Rock Mountain forbid, <laughs> if you are, it doesn't seem like... Are you talking like about Udath? You know, people call things by different names. My my, my friend Risf, he said that 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 Udoth knowed Old Lady Big Rock Mountain and they was friends, or something like that. I don't know. I, I can't keep it all straight. Sometimes. You mean that Kobold who's very flimsy about all any of the religions he uh, goes about with? Yeah, he seems to like all of them. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of strange that we see him come in and out of port every once in so often. He usually brings me cargo and then tries to bless me in every single god imaginable, which by that time I'm just like, that's cute. Let me, uh, I'll just worship Usha and be on my way. Let's see, Mr. Rattles here. He's nice and he is, like you said, practically made of magic. We've met plenty of good people who, well, I, who do I mean, magic. I'm made of a little bit of sinew and optic fibers that give me a little bit of neutrons in my le my arm. But uh, the most case scenario, <laughs> that's just bone meal and magic. I, I guess, you know what? Magic is in my bone meal. I'm fine with that. <laughs> All I'm saying, Eloy, is not that I am immediately going to say that you do magic, <laughs> but... Uh, but, if, but he does, though. If you did, it doesn't sound like it's all bad. I'll, I'll, all right. Well, let me put it to you this way. All right. Now, I got this one song. This one song that I've I've not played it once the whole time I've been with you fellas because it makes people real, real happy. And I, I like that. I like pe making people real happy and it makes them feel real agreeable for a while. And then a while after I'm done with my song, they get real powerful mad. That's a charm spell, kid. Okay, I, di I didn't want to do that to nobody though. I just wanted to make them happy. I, without the other part where they get real mad and say I'm wicked and sinful. I feel like that's more just ignorance and not knowing what the spell did more than it is being evil. Okay. Could I play that song for you right now? I mean... I won't make you do nothing. I won't tell you to do nothing that you don't want to do. I just want to show you show you how it works, and maybe you can tell me how to not make people so mad he, with he, it no more. He just, like, puts his arms behind his back. He knows full well that this spell will not work on him being undead. Here, how about you use it on me, Eloy? I trust you. Implicitly. It better if you use it on him, actually. I'm not one of the physical. Although, actually, wait, much. it might not work for me either. Uh, I have advantage on saving throws against being charmed. But <laughs> unless, unless, unless you, unless you like, you're willing. Yeah, 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 you're, yeah. you're willing to forego yeah. the saving Okay, yeah. Throw. I'm basically opening my mind to it. Yeah, you're allowing this to happen. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and cast Suggestion on you. All right. And I'll... So. Nice of him not to use the bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> well, those those are for far away magic. Yeah. <laughs> Powerful magic. <Yeah. laughs> and I don't know. I'm trying to think of a of something that like you a, would not normally do. To a see banal suggestion. That yeah. Uh, you're you're gonna have to like bring this to him because I I can't describe the magic until you give it to him. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I've I've cast suggestion on you. You have foregone your saving throw, so it is effective. Um, and my, I will just suggest that you. Let's see. Has to be reasonable, not obviously self-harmful. That's not a problem. 
Um, okay. Every, all right, I am sending you the powerful suggestion that that you will always give me a high five every time I, ri I lift my hand up. All right. See, so he has to... Now, he's feeling so happy, so agreeable, that every time I do this... Just every time, he doesn't even have to think about it. Watch, watch this. Close your eyes, turn around. See, he just <laughs> does it every time. Because he's so feeling so happy. But every time I've done that and tried to make somebody happy, the next morning, you know, sometimes like... You know, three or four hours up to eight hours later, they just, they just get real mad. See a doctor for less long than eight hours. <laughs> See, ask your doctor about charm spells. Ask your doctor about suggestion. <laughs> if your suggestion lasts more than 12 hours, you may need to consult a medical professional. Yeah, because... What you're doing is is you're invoking his mind to do a certain task that doesn't make him hurt himself. That's now I'm gonna put this to you straight, kid. That's mind control. Oh, I don't want to control nobody's mind. I just, I just want to make him happy. Hey, 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 hey! You're controlling their mind. Like what you just did to him, you're controlling his mind to have <laughs> him do that. I don't see that as harmful. Just kind of goofy. All right, all right, hold on. I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I've never tried doing nothing like this before. I, I release my concentration and release you from the spell. <sighs> all right. Now, I want, I want you to not high five me. Okay. I, I know it's hard because we're best friends. We are good friends. But don't, if you don't want me to high five you, I will not, Eli. Can I okay. high five you? Nedra like comes over with her giant hands. Oh, easy. <laughs> the story oh. ended. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I will high five you next, Nedra. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm starting to. So I. Oh, that's weird. I I gotta ponder over this some. <laughs> I th I think I did a wicked without realizing it. Well, if you didn't realize it, is it really a wicked? I feel like wickedness comes from knowingly doing wrong, Eloy. I I, I look at Eli I look at Eloy. I tell him, it's only wicked depending on what you do with it. With these fists, I could do irreparable damage to many things. Oh, show Same off. Same with... <laughs> I look at you. <laughs> Just like my silver tongue could do. You're making a fine point. Nedra could do irreparable damage with her hands, probably more than I could, frankly. <laughs> you see one of the gargoyles look up. Can I do bad with these hands? Shut up and get back to work! <laughs> oh. What I choose to do is I choose to use them for good. Your powers are a tool, Eloy. Remember that. All right, I'll think on that some. N Nedra, now, now we just talked about doing good. Can you, like, like Wake was trying to talk you, to teach you control? Can you do me well, the? We barely started. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're Try, lining yourself up for her to high five through your hand. <laughs> Try and do just the softest high five you can. Can you do that for me, Nedra? What's your AC? <laughs> Fifteen. <laughs> 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 she puts you through oh. the floor. <laughs> yeah! Push! <laughs> the softest high five she gives you pushes you out the window. <laughs> 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 All right, we'll work on that. That was a good try. Good first try. Oh, for one point of damage. All right. <laughs> Wait, no, I didn't add her strength. Sorry. That's six points of damage. <laughs> She's as strong as I am fast. <laughs> Can I? <laughs> I? I make my way back inside. And you, you watch as Riles just goes. <sighs> <laughs> like he makes a little fireball, throws it out to the, like a, a purple fireball, throws it out, and the the glass returns back to the window. <laughs> Boy, I was just about to ask you how much that would cost to fix. It's amazing what you can do with magic, kid. Right. And I would consider that a good thing <laughs> with my modified 20 in persuasion. Roll insight. <laughs> okay, I can see how that, if you're real careful and don't blow up the world, that that could be a good thing. I, I will think about everything you said. <laughs> oh, don't get it backwards. Sometimes blowing stuff up is the best way to use magic. I mean, if you, 
let's cross that bridge when we come to it. I feel like we're we're on we're at Well, I mean, I, I run a shop here. I was gonna sell him this cool staff. What does it do? Blow shit up. <laughs> Hand you a staff of fireball. <laughs> All, all right, I'm I'm remembering how that man maw almost killed our good friend Onslow Green. If 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 I could have blowed that man maw up, that wouldn't be a bad thing. Exactly. Remember uh, all the times that we've been in fights and how you've you've got a bow and arrow. Like you, we have f- attacked things for good reasons. Yeah, you want to test it out? Rankles, get in here! <laughs> These poor, poor gargoyles. I can't wait for Eloy to get power mad with magic. <laughs> oh, that does feel good. <laughs> More. Hello, my name is Wrinkles. Ah, oh, don't give him a name. That'll make this harder. Now you can put yourself to back together if I do a bad on you. Yes. I mean, I can. Okay. All right. Yes. Go. You roll arcane. Do it. Seven. Pew. <laughs> you know, like you know, like how the fireball in Mario kind of like dissipates after a while. It hits the floor. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Yeah. Hilo, that was a good first try. You actually made something come out of it. I bet I couldn't do that. Wow. All right. Hey, 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 hey! You didn't buy it yet. <laughs> we don't want to use all of it. It's a try. It's a tryout item. All right. I don't, I don't, I don't after know. That, after that stunning display <laughs> from this magical item. <laughs> Easy now. Don't hurt the merchandise. <laughs> this is just the trial product. Imagine how good a new one's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll hold your horses there, Merlin. We got another one. <laughs> this, <laughs> this one might not be quite your speed. <laughs> Imagine all this shit coming out of a fucking skeleton, yeah, too. I just, I just love, like, salesman skeleton. Just be like, whoa, we got a regular old wizard on our hands. <laughs> For a measly 400 gold, you could take this home. I'll, all right, I'll, I'll think about it. When we when we come back to pick up to pick up your, your stuff that he's identifying, I'll, I'll, I'll decide. All right, kid. I feel like we've made some real progress, Eloy. We might be learning something about you. Um, Can I throw you through the window again? Okay, just once. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, fuck me, and that 20. (laughs) Whee! (laughs) What? He's hit water. (laughs) And he's now in the fucking general store. (laughs) Hello, Mr. Horseman. Ah, Timothy! And we'll end the session here. <laughs> oh, I wanted to do some shit in town. Oh, you want to sh- Oh, no, you know what? You know what? No, 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 no. It's yeah, fine. We can, that that we can do that. We can do that. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, so we're, we're... Well, now we're seeing Timothy. <laughs> we cannot say hi to Timothy. Timothy, let me let me ask you something. You're, you're real big and strong, but you're so gentle. How do you feel about punching? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes that's, that's a bad thing. That's... Okay. I got a friend who's real big and strong like you. I, I'm, I'm running out of the store. Hey, are you okay? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just talking to Timothy. I'm just t- Why? T- t- you see, you, you see. God, hold on. I, 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 <laughs> Abigail, you see Abigail kind of like turn the corner. Why is there a centaur hole in my wall? Oh, that was Nedra. I point back at Nedra. <laughs> I can make a me-sized wall. No. <laughs> Nedra, this is Abigail. Abigail, you. She, uh, <laughs> we, we, we have to apologize to Abigail for breaking her wall. Yeah. And uh, this is Timothy. Hello. How big is Timothy in comparison to Nedra? I like recall seven. him. I recall him being like eight feet tall. Yeah, he's like, like he's like seven five, eight feet tall. So we like he's, has to slightly shorter. look up to her then if she's yeah. like nine foot. She is the only person I've ever met what is bigger than you, Timothy. There's someone bigger than me. Yeah, her name's Nedra. Timothy, this is Nedra. Hello, Nedra. Hello, Timothy. <laughs> That's a funny way to say your name, isn't it, Timothy? Thank you, <laughs> Abigail says. <laughs> you won't come back and see the pumpkin patch. 
boy, I sure do. <laughs> All right. Uh, how, how much do you think this wall's going to cost, Abigail? You see Rattles just kind of like shamble out. <sighs> <laughs> Oh, okay, I'm starting to see how magic can be real useful. <laughs> I go around to the door. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> hey, 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 slow your roll there, kid. Hundred bucks. What? 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 The wa what? What's a? I did you a service. Oh, oh, it's Rattles uh, asking for it. Fair enough, Rattles. I give him back a hundred gold from the. Thank you. He just kind of walks back. You see a bunch of kids. The Bone Man. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> He's cranky when he goes outside. Something rattled him. <laughs> That's why I don't go outside, Slab! <laughs> no bones about it. <laughs> <laughs> Eloy, what's your will save? Roll me a will save. Uh, let's see. Twelve. <sighs> what's your spell AC? Uh, spell okay. AC. Uh, Is that a thing? My spell save DC? Sp yeah, spell save. Uh, 14. D 14? Okay. Yeah, uh, you, you, you say that pun, and then you look to everyone else, and everyone sees that you are full donkey head now. <laughs> Holy crap! Whoa! That's an animal I recognize. <laughs> He's still talking normally. He just now looks like he He's has now the a head talking of a donkey. donkey. Yeah. What? Does he does he have the human torso anymore? Is yeah, no, the, it's just the donkey head, human torso. <laughs> He's now two thirds donkey. Ah, uh, I'm confused. <laughs> You're telling me, Abigail says. It's All probably right. Rattles being an asshole. Here's some other fun stuff that magic can do. I oh, I don't have a mirror. Never mind. I thought I bought one. <laughs> I certainly don't. I mean, oh wait, I do. I have a small mirror. For my uh, thieves' tools. Take a look at this. Oh no, Mr. Rattles, Mr. Rattles, turn it back, please. I didn't mean to be mean to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> there you go. You see, all better now. No, oh. it was scary. It wasn't evil because nothing bad came of it. <laughs> My whole face was different, Ezra. Yeah, it was different for a little bit, and it was actually kind of fun. But because it's normal that's, now. That's not fun. People can just do stuff to your face without your say so. That's wicked. Unless, like it unless you're really good at remember, magic. Remember, it's how you use it. He decided to use it wickedly. You can decide to use it good. And if you're good, at, if you are skilled with magic from using it in a good way a lot. You'll be able to defend from people who use it wickedly. Imagine mm -hmm. how many times Ezra almost wouldn't die if you had magic. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's true. I could. You want to know what the real magic is? Abigail says you oh, find no. something. What do you want? <laughs> oh, I show her the map that I made. Here, I said I'd make one of these. Oh, fantastic. She takes a look at the northern uh, side of the island that you have mapped. I've mapped out all of Piranha <laughs> Bog, upwards to the coastline, beyond the coastline, down back towards the uh, temple, and then back here. Ah, oh, fantastic. Hmm. Well, this actually does... Hmm. It's unfortunate you couldn't get the heart of Piranha Bog. Yeah, like, but nobody, nobody I can else understand. had gills. <laughs> I can understand why you wouldn't want to. It's kind of very dangerous. So, with that in mind, I'll give you 100 gold for the map. All right, that pays off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yep, rolled a one, sorry. It's all good. <laughs> now, Abigail, I have probably a confusing uh, inquiry about uh, something you might be selling. Do you have what? cotton candy? No, not quite. Well, hey, Nedra, we, we'll, we'll ask about that soon. Push her face away. <laughs> I'm wondering. Just hang out with Timothy and the pumpkins. <laughs> Do you have any fancy looking, but actually useless trinkets? <laughs> <laughs> Do you just have any like fun knickknacks? Something that you'd oh, use to well, decorate or? Uh... I mean, we have children's toys that are replicas of things of such. Ooh, okay. I like where you're going. What? Uh, what do you got? Well, uh. Children's toys that are replicas of something useful but are actually useless in and of themselves, you say. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness there's no real-world metaphor for that. How much was that? <laughs> that was like 45 bucks. Oh, wow. 
Jeez. <laughs> yeah, turns out prop bagpipes, not a thing. <laughs> Real bagpipes are really expensive. Yeah. child size bagpipes that are not very well re reviewed on Amazon because they don't fucking work, reasonably cheap. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So, uh... She uh she goes by, shows you like a couple of fake swords because the kids like to play pirate mm -hmm. every once in a while. Uh, they have uh little joke uh mugs of ale that if you pull a compartment, a little fake snake pops out of it. Ooh, and uh, they have a few. They actually have a ring that almost looks exactly like Lancey. Okay, I will definitely buy that ring and uh, one of those swords. Alrighty, that'll be five silver. Five silver. You know what? You've been a sweetheart. I'll make it ten. Oh, thanks, kid. You're very welcome. Roll uh, persuasion real quick. Uh, modified twenty-four. She'll throw in the cup as well. <gasps> Thank you. So you now have a fake snake in a grog bottle. <laughs> I'm just going to write it as snake in a can. I will remember. Yep. But is there anything else you guys need? Do, uh, do you no, have we... any cotton candy? No. Okay. We do have rock candy. Ooh. She might like that more because it's more of a challenge. <laughs> so it's a candy she sort of has to fight to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I will try some rock candy. I won't, uh, forgive the pun, I won't sugarcoat it, but I actually <gasps> have done a little bit of a side hobby of making treats and confectionery items. So, I do have some rock candy, yes. She hands you she hands you a small little stick of rock candy. Nedra, would you like to split this with me? She's outside. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, she's out in the pumpkin patch. She gave Jiminy. it to you, specifically. <laughs> Roll con. Uh-oh. <laughs> 18. 18? You barely don't shatter a tooth. Well, funny enough, you take a bite out of it. Roll me a 1d4. Two. You get two HP back. Ooh. <laughs> hey. You're getting thrown through a wall. Yep. She laced the candy with medicine. Is this how you get Timothy to eat it? <laughs> yes. Ah. Uh. That is a really smart idea. I, I will take a, I'll take a big old bag. All right. Well, we have that, and we have the strong version. It's going to cost you a little bit more. Ooh. Yeah. Strong version would probably be pretty good. How much? Hmm. Oh, yeah, I forgot you won that bet, so you're probably loaded. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty flush. <laughs> He's stacked. Yeah. Well. Considering the type of rock, like, she gave you, like, the pink version of the rock candy. Now she shows you, like, the deep red version of the rock candy. This will be 300. 300 silver. A piece? Oh, 300 silver a piece. Okay. Yeah, she's talking in silver right now. She's a general store, for Christ's sake. <laughs> gotcha. So three gold a piece. Yeah. I'll take it. Alrighty. So you now have rock candy that heals up to 1d10. Jesus, wow. I bought three of those. <laughs> She has a finite supply, so yeah, go ahead and grab them. How many more do you have, ma'am? Let's see. She has three more. Three more? I'll take them. And how much was that again? Three silver or three gold apiece? Yep. Gets me down to an even number. Anything else you boys need? Uh, no. I need to go see the Gimmick Brothers, though. All right. Anything else for you two? Um... Yeah, I, don't I think also so. want to see the Gimme Brothers, but nothing else here. I'm gonna look outside to see how Nedra and Eloy are getting, or Nedra and uh, Timothy are getting along. Smashing pumpkins. Mm. <laughs> Spider on my rage. <laughs> 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 All right, you head on. Uh, well, Nedra's still there. She's smashing pumpkins with Timothy. All right, Nedra, uh, are you okay here for a bit? I'm fine. Hey, look, he's got the same thing like I do. Yeah, he does. Wait a minute. Yeah, he does. Roll perception. Yeah, mine's not very good. That's a nat 20. Oh, well, you, I'll leave the look into you. Not only is there a little bit of rot under his arm, there also looks like there's kind of a cut down the middle. Hey, Timothy, are you, is, uh... 
How long has that cut been there on your arm? Oh, I only had this for about two days. When did that happen? Well, I don't know. I was out growing, I was out chasing birds away when all of a sudden I tripped and fell. And then I felt this small pain in my arm. And then when I looked at it, I thought it was a black and blue, but it's kind of been there for a couple of days now. Mr. Rattles! <laughs> <laughs> Rattles isn't here. He was in his tower. Yeah, I know. I'm yelling. <laughs> I run over to Rattles' place and knock on that old gargoyle again. Hey, oh, God. Why does this always shift? Hey, what's up? Hey, uh, we need to talk to Rattles real quick. Uh, we have found something. There's magic afoot. I can't believe how many times people have said that today as a joke. <laughs> come on in. I'm, 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 I'm kind of pulling uh, Timothy by the arm. He's like, come on, we, we have to... Abigail, see Abigail's this. like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? We think there might be something wrong with Timothy. And, well, I mean... And Rattles can help. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not in... Don't but, worry about it. But she is kind of concerned now. You're kind of dragging <laughs> it's, him it's away. Her, yeah, it's, it's her adopted boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you, she's coming with you. Yeah. Sure. All right, Rattles is like, there, there's the skeletons again. Welcome to the, oh God, it's you guys again. I had this gimmick up and everything. And it was going to be great. Surprise someone who came in. Lord knows a few people don't. Oh, it's the pumpkin kid. Timothy, can you show him the cut on your arm? It's in the same. <laughs> it's in the same spot that I found on some of those rat men. Uh, and Timothy he says that's recent. How did this happen? Timothy replies to him how it happened. Uh, Rattles, like, pulls out a little tweezer and tries to actually pull the cut open. Whoa, but Timothy whoa, whoa, whoa. backs up. It's okay, Timothy. I, I, I try to comfort him. Roll uh, diplomacy. Uh, do 15. 15? He will chill out. You matched. It's okay. It's okay, Timothy. Just let, just let Mr. Rettles look, and it won't hurt bad anymore. Takes the tweezers. Let's roll medical. Nat 20. Yeah. All right, he's good at this. Actually, when you were talking to him, he just pretty much fucking opened the wound and, didn't, and he didn't <laughs> oh. even notice. He looks back. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> well, by the looks of it, this is necrotic damage. Almost looks the same as that little girl you got. Little girl, huh? <laughs> that little girl's uh, yeah, arm right scout. over there. She's got some of that, too. Yeah, she seems to have gotten it from that Victor guy. Mm. I worry that this is a similar thing. Yeah, this... Well, on the upside, nothing's in the flesh, and it looks like only a little bit of the skin has been cut. I think feel like this might have been a magic means to try and open up some wounds. Why would somebody want to do that to poor Timothy? He looks at you and goes... <clears throat> Try and pull. Roll, uh, roll perception to see if you hear that. Uh, that'd be a 12. Uh, 17. Nine. You got, you, you hear him go, tadpole. So you think they're trying to plant things in Timothy too, huh? I think he might be the next victim. Timothy, where exactly were you when this happened? Just outside the pumpkin patch. So in the middle of the village? Yeah. Was this during the day? No, more like when the sun was going down. I mean, that's still pretty brazen to be doing that at dusk. We're gonna need to keep an eye on Eloy, or we're gonna need to keep an eye on Timothy tonight. On Eloy, yeah, no magic. <laughs> no. <laughs> now I, Eloy, I, I tell I tell, I, I tell Abigail magic. to go inform uh, Mary and the people at the uh, Flappy Stingray that somebody might be targeting Timothy. For, their, for these experiments that we know about. She will agree to that, but she's also like, well, what about the shop now? Well, you, can, you can stay at the shop. I mean, the best thing we can do is pretend like nothing's happening, but keep an eye on him. All right, I'll, I'll usher... She, like, walks over and, like, closes up the shop. I'll usher him down the street to the Flappy Stingray. All right. We need to go about our business and pretend like we don't even know what's happening. Even after screaming fucking Rattles' <laughs> name out loud? Like, yeah. Yeah, we've, we've been dealing with him. People will assume it's just, you know, more magic fun <laughs> malarkey. Alrighty. What do you guys want to do next? Well, as well, I walk out, I'm performing, and thanks for repairing my watch! <laughs> with a nine in performance. You walk right into the gargoyle. 
<laughs> no, you trip like trip. <laughs> I'm so clumsy. You, I'm sorry, sir. You gotta watch where you go when I was walking here. My mistake, my good friend. We're friends. Uh, you know, friends me, in the. <laughs> he like waddles over. Let me give you. A, he like melts away as he goes outside the door. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> He's dust. My friend. <laughs> can I? Can I just sweep that? <laughs> you sweep. You sweep it back in. Yeah. You do, and he like forms back. He forms back, but now it's just a leg. As you push more, he like keeps coming and coming and coming. <laughs> and then finally, his face is on the back of his head. Thank you. It walks back in, shuts the door. All right, and last stop of the day while we uh, go let everybody formulate some sort of watch detail for Timothy, which I'm guessing we'll start next time, is we need to go see the gi uh, the Gimmick Brothers. Yes. All righty. You guys head on over to the Ramshackle little forge-like building. Uh, this time, there's a giant bear, cla uh, bear, uh, bear trap hung from the ceiling right above his head. Look, it's like I told you, Gimmick. If you just hold still at the right angle, it'll just barely miss you. I don't know. Wouldn't my temples kind of like hurt? Oh, come on. Don't be a chicken's pussy. Hey, you know what really hurts? Oh, oh! hey! <laughs> and he ducks under it just in time. Snank. Probably getting shot by one of these things. I pull out the magic uh, blunderbuss that we found. Oh, really? Where'd you find that? Oh, you know, same place we found this, and I, with flourish, pull out the naval outfit. It wasn't always empty. There was also a body in it, but I had to get it off of it. Would you happen to know anything about this? No. Fellas. Really? Because a little birdie told me you might. <laughs> and I told you we should have killed that thing. <laughs> and I also was waiting for that line. <laughs> I was waiting to use it. <laughs> <laughs> And also my 16 insight. <laughs> he wants to look through your deceptions. They rolled a three. You would have got it. <laughs> no, we caught them off guard. Yeah. Just like, now I wish that bear trap did kill me. All right, look, what do you want? What do you want? We don't want the captain knowing about this. We don't want the captain knowing that we killed a... Shut up. Keep your mouth closed. We don't want the captain knowing we killed someone when it's not part of his deal. Oh, we understand that. Um... I believe we had an agreement about making a few costumes as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, is that what you want? We can give you that. I also want to know how this gun works. This gun? Oh. Oh. Uh, we've been kind of experimenting with something that fires bombs from a f great distance. It only worked for one shot, and sometimes the ammo is really not that reliable. It kind of broke the gun when we fired it. Yeah, and it I kind see of that. blew a hole in the guy's chest. So they literally just told you that they were experimenting and creating a grenade launcher. <laughs> and killed a Navy man with it. I mean, it's a huge success, but we didn't want that to happen because we never wanted to actually kill a civilian, let alone the Navy. That might have been the reason why they're here. Uh, I can assure you it's not why they're here. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Uh, that being said, how did you end up hitting this guy? Is that just a misfire or what? I, I mean... Wrong place, wrong time? Yeah, kind of like he, he kind of had his musket drawn on us, and then we fired back. Oh, well, that's self-defense. Regardless, I don't think Mead has to hear about this. That's good. We don't need that. We, we, we like staying alive and doing what we do for, you know, for the, what we do. Speaking of doing what you do, I want some fantastic costumes. And here's five pounds of some of the most beautiful feathers I've been able to gather from the wildlife around here. These are huge. Yeah, they are. I'm hoping that can make some good outfits for my friends and I. I mean. Maybe. Yes, of course we can. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's terrific. And uh, I mean, with, with the amount of feathers you gave us and with a little bit more money, we could actually make a full suit. Well, that would be and splendid. And one tailored to, wait, one of the, like, gimme, the gimmick comes like, right next to you and just starts like pulling out measuring tape and like right next to your head and starts like trying to measure everything. And then he finally gets <laughs> to the horse part. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got the measurements. <laughs> so they said to you with a little bit of gold, they absolutely can do this and get this done for you in a couple of days. 
a little bit of gold. I don't know. We're keeping I don't know. that how, secret how much, for I, you. I, I hear silence is golden. <laughs> <laughs> Roll intimidation. As the comedian of the troupe, I am thrilled that Wake is awakening to such a thing. Uh, 19. I rolled a 20. Ah! Oh. Well, I'm not intimidating. <laughs> uh, I'm we... just being honest. I mean, this is a trick. Can I assist since I also know the secret? Is that, is that how that works? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, go ahead and roll it again. Uh, my intimidation is not quite as good. It's, you know uh, what? Hold on. I'll do it better. You go ahead and roll that. I'm going to roll them with disadvantage. Okay. Oh, fuck yeah. Roll the one. <laughs> wow, right from one yeah, side to the, the other. The spectrum on that one. One of them's like, I don't... Fuck it, okay! <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, one of them's just like, I mean, we kind of are legitimate... No, just take it! Fucking give it to me! Just be Shut up, gimmick! <laughs> They're keeping our secret! <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll throw you in some, some pay in business to, to sweeten the deal. Do you guys know how to make a cotton candy machine? Oh, my! You don't know how to cook? Oh. Well, it was I mean, I, I guess we can make a machine that... I don't know. We don't know. We need blueprints. We've never done something like that. We make weapons and clothing. Oh. What if we go back and steal a machine and bring it to them so that they can mm. replicate it? I, I was I was planning to ask, and then somebody started punching people as we left. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> they had slaves. Yeah. That's, that, that does sound pretty wicked. Yeah. I'm, I'm not really mad. I didn't I think just, you were. I just really wanted all the cotton candy. Well, we will eventually have to head back there anyway. And if we make enough of a fuss, I'm sure we can figure something out. I think we can find that out ourselves. <laughs> that shouldn't ne be a Nedra's problem. sitting there this whole time. She's like the cotton candy machine. The cotton candy machine is a sole proprietor owner of the Fine Day Boardwalk <laughs> Company. Restrictions apply. Results may vary. You may not take anything of it. I'm sorry. That's kind of a bad habit. Mr. Thurday makes sure that I guard the place as well. Hey, you're fine, Nedra. That's not your job anymore. That's... <laughs> That was like computer, just like <laughs> just drilled into her. Yep. <laughs> and I believe I uh, <clears throat> let's see. I I, I also uh, would kind of like this to be silver plated. I show him like the spearhead of my uh, spear here. Oh well, we can do that. That'll take us a day, but we can absolutely uh, sheath the metal in silver. All right. Just uh, don't touch the staff part. That part's important. Well, I mean, we're going to have to take it off to coat the metal. No problem. I, I uh, undo my little I want workings. You, I want you to... I don't know if I want to do this and be a dickhole, but I want you to roll me. No problem. <laughs> Just roll me a d20. I crafted it. This would be a wisdom check, wouldn't it? Yep. Uh, that's a 13. <laughs> Which, Which, son of a... Yeah, like, Tunk. you have a little bit of trouble with it, but you're able to pull the piece off. I was just like, if you rolled below a 10, I would have had you break the shit out of that thing. <laughs> yeah, we'll absolutely be able to do something like that. I hand him the spearhead. It just kind of dusts, like, some of the resin off that I used to, like, cook that to the spear. Or yep. to the uh, so quarterstaff. So now you, now you have a quarterstaff. Yep. My master's quarterstaff. I also have a, a question. You wouldn't happen to have... Like, I've got this crossbow here. Do you have any sort of, like, explosive bolts? <laughs> <laughs> They're both smiling at that. <laughs> they they go behind the counter, press the button, it flips <laughs> over, and there's a rack of arrows. <laughs> That's what I like to hear, fellas. Because I keep trying to do this the old-fashioned way, what with coating it with oil and shooting it at stuff. I feel like I could probably just cut out a middleman here and... Uh, yeah, it sounds right right up your alley. I start well, rubbing the scar on my neck and looking at you. <laughs> Don't worry. They I'm notice. Let's see. Roll per I'm rolling a perception for them. They notice you rubbing your neck. You did that to him? <gasps> That's a great test subject right there. <laughs> Look, Ryan. <laughs> I'm going to say that test was a failure, and we're not going to try to repeat it. Nonsense! Look at it. It left a scar. Here, here. Check this out. They hand you a stack of five explosive arrows. They're going to cost a pretty penny, but I guarantee you, if that hit his neck, his whole head would have blown clean off. Yeah, that's rough. Say. My whole head, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I look at it. The whole head, you say? The whole head and maybe even some of the chest. Wow. You probably could have seen his lungs. I mean, 
that would have been tragic, but it would have been pretty awesome if it would have worked on, say, like the man maw. There you got to think of the bigger picture. There is I'm not going to aim it at you again. There is a small problem, though. The arrow won't explode in game. The arrow won't explode until after one turn. So it has to get okay, stuck so in there firmly. So it can't be like a, a on contact explosion? No, it's not on contact. It's stick. Shucks. It's, it's a sticky bomb, pretty much. So I'm guessing the way it works is like as it's fired out of the crossbow, there's some sort of like Fuse. flint on the arrowhead that sparks a wick yep. or something. Yep, exactly. Well, I guess that's better than nothing. And hopefully if we're all attacking whatever it is I'd be shooting this at, uh, it'll you're, be... You're literally... They're literally selling you a firecracker embedded into an arrowhead with mm. a really long fuse. That sounds cool. <laughs> Theoretically, <laughs> couldn't I cut that fuse to make it blow up faster? <laughs> Oh, wait, no, then it wouldn't probably touch the flint and therefore wouldn't light in the first bit place, so I guess not. But if we fight a creature that's cloaked with fire... I mean, All yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, how there's, much... There's Nedra. <laughs> You're saying it's a pretty penny. Uh, you know, how does that translate to, you know, real we dollars? We only have five arrows, so they're really, really rare and really expensive, and they're really experimental. I'd say a hundred apiece. Whew. Got a lot of gold bars. And that's true. All right. If I give you one of these and I produce one of the gold bars we have, would that cover it, you think? Get you about. Do you want us to make you gold bar arrows? Because that wouldn't work. No, I'm asking, can I pay in this? We might have to go to the bank to get those traded yeah, out. Yeah, we. Th this is just straight up, we need currency. Oh, that's, that's, that's fine. I'll cover you. All right. You can owe me. Fair enough. <laughs> Eloy holds a grudge. <laughs> Eloy holds a grudge. <laughs> Eloy, you'll be Eloy, my... save me. <laughs> I don't know when you're going to pay me that gold, Joe. Me <laughs> <laughs> I count them out 500 gold pieces. All righty. 500, and there you go. Five arrows. You're a good man, Eloy. So I'm going to dress you up nice once they finish I'm, the I'm going to give you the stats outfit. on those. So basic arrow damage, and then after one turn, so long as the enemy is not able to pull them out... Which, even if they do, that might just make it explode even more. <laughs> it could blow up in their face, but I'm guessing if it's still inside of them, it would do more damage. Yep. Uh, you're looking at a 1d6 uh, of arrow damage, so that's pretty much out of the bow, and a plus 1d6 fire damage. So 1d6 fire damage after one turn after your crossbow's damage. Yep. According to the... The crossbow that I got, and it says 1d8. Yeah, that's that... your that's your crossbow's damage. Okay. So, and then after one turn, it'll do 1d6 okay. fire damage. All right. I apologize. The crossbow was 1d8. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. All right. With that, they're going so, to get our stuff. Have I been overpowering We're going to get our stuff fixed up, and we're going to go back to the Flappy Stingray and plan out our surveillance of Timothy. Very well. And that's where we will end tonight. All right. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. I think we'll Ooh. give a couple more readouts here. It's been a very... Informative day. Yes, <laughs> we've learned quite a yeah, bit. Yeah, I was like, I'm so. I, I know you got the the hat out and everything. I'm just like, I don't think you're gonna be fighting stuff. Oh, though. don't worry. I, I I punched somebody. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> someone got slapped. Somebody got punched square in the face. Yeah, and someone else will remember that. Oh, I'm <laughs> whatever. Telltale oh, style. Do yeah. your <laughs> fucking worst. You don't Not even. You, you, you don't even know who Knight is, but Knight will remember that <laughs> when he hears about it. Hey, man, they were scared for mutiny. <laughs> that means word must travel really fast. Yeah, as long as, like, the island... Well, I mean, unless they have some sort of magical means of communication, but... I've got good persuasion. I can convince them that it was all Thuraday's fault. A pirate lord? <laughs> <laughs> well, we will also remember the 600 bits from the Envious Wrath saying, Hey, gang, enjoying watching your campaign way more than I thought I would. Been toying with the idea of writing a book, but using D&D mechanics and dice rolls to decide how the story progresses. I'm pretty sure that's how the Dragonlance novels started. So and that's yep. literally how my first campaign went. Nice. That is literally how I was like, I, I need a story. How do I, how does this work? I have all these fucking books on my shelf and no one to play with. <laughs> all right, time to fucking make some magic happen. <laughs> Omega the AI with 2,700 bits Woo. saying, thanks for another wonderful episode, guys. Have an amazing and wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. Thank you. You Thank too. Thank you. Yeah. 
and 500 bits from lovely Lorelai52 saying, Happy almost Thanksgiving. Hope you all have a good holiday. As a chef, I always end up cooking the whole dinner for my family. You guys ever cook? Uh, that's Yeah, that's that's my job. To, uh, th like Last Thanksgiving, like we had a Friendsgiving, and I made the entire run for everybody. Uh, this year is the first year I'm hosting Thanksgiving for my family. So nice. I got some family coming in from out of town, and I'm going to be cooking up the whole shebang. Turkey, mashed potatoes, stuffing, corn casserole. A lot of great stuff. I'm looking forward to it. I actually, uh, my wife and I just did our Thanksgiving shopping last night. Nice. Same here, actually. Uh, we, I, I, I barely know how to cook, but like, if you give me the recipe and the ingredients, I'll be like, okay, this is how you, you can, do it, blah, blah, blah. You can follow I, instructions. I, I am the complete opposite. I do not follow recipes at all. I'm just like, eh, this looks right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the most I need is what temperature does the meat need to be to be Safely Done. edible. That's Casey. She's just like, oh, this is how this works? Eh, fuck it. We'll just do it this way. <laughs> and it works. And then that beer bread we had before is out there. That's <laughs> nice. what happened. Nice. Yeah, I could I could never get the hang of baking. That's too much. Like, you put it in the oven, and that's the it. <laughs> Cooking is an art. Baking is science. Yeah. I don't do science. <laughs> <laughs> And we got a couple of a couple of subs. We got Ephispil saying, "I found a Twitch streamer. I am willing to give my Prime subscription to, and it's you guys." Thank Aww. you. Uh, we got Magok saying, "Thanks guys for everything." With the four month sub, we got Thank you, Magok. Yeah, oh, and Magok. we got Argent Lyle thirteen with uh, an eleven month. 999 sub. Wow, Holy wow. Thank you. Damn. Yeah, saying thanks for nearly a year of entertainment. Zeno makes both a great DM and a great player and provides a lot of inspiration for me to draw. Thanks for helping me with mm -hmm. my depression, guys. Aw. Oh. Well, well, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much for sticking around. It's almost a year. Yeah. It's crazy. We're, get, we're getting close. So, like, sometime in January, we'll be getting that our first one-year anniversary. Wow. Yeah. wow. Maybe even in December. I can't remember. Uh, December was when we got affiliated, I think, maybe. I th yeah. I can't even remember. Pretty sure it was December of last year, yeah. But that, oh, wait, well, yeah, then does that run on affiliates or partners? I don't know. I think it runs on, I, I think it only runs on partners, but we'll see. Yeah. But I think you guys got partner before the affiliate Look, thing Look, if we're happened. getting 11 yeah. months now, and I can only track our payments back to last January, so it's weird. Yeah. But we'll start getting our 12 months soon. Yeah. It's crazy. Math! Whole years. <laughs> Roll to math. <laughs> what I get? I, I, I don't know. I can't math. Oh, <laughs> no! My 20-sided die is all ones! <laughs> all right, what else we got? And I think that's it for this evening. All right. Well, thank uh, you so much for joining us here. Yep. Uh, we've had a next week. Is it going to be Wednesday? Yes. Uh, next yes. week we will be on on Wednesday because Grant gets back on Tuesday. He just happened to decide to travel Tuesday to Tuesday. Look, I did that back when we were planning on having this on Friday to avoid said <laughs> that's, that's, conflict. So that's you know, fair. life comes at you fast. Life comes at you <laughs> really fast. But we'll be back on at the table next Wednesday. Which yep. would normally be Wednesday Hem. Yep. Which means Next. that if I win this week, I might be defending my Tuesday Hem championship. Oh my goodness! Mm. I've been undefeated at Tuesday Hem and Wednesday Hem for that matter. But still, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. And we'll see you guys next time at the table. <laughs>